Welcome everybody. We have afternoon again, we have Saturday, and that's time for our interview, Meet the Harp Stars. And I'm of course, as always, very pleased that we have such a wonderful guest today, Anne Young from the United States. And of course, as everybody from the harp world knows her, I just would like to introduce her a little bit for those who are not from the harpist world and that they would like to know who we are meeting today. Annie Young is known for her bold artistry. Annie Young is recognized for her multifaceted career and creativity as one of the leader, har leadest harping, leading harpists and teachers of her generation. A prize winner of several international and national harp competitions, she has since served as a judge through the board, including serving twice on the jury of the United States International Harp Competition. She is dedicated to the expansion of the repertoire and has premiered numerous works, including her transcriptions of Johann Sebastian Bach's Goldberg Variations at the Carnegie Hall in 1999 as an artist international winner, the first known performance of the complete work on the harp. At the Atletea duo, I hope I have pronounced it correctly, otherwise I will of course ask Anne again to tell it during the interview. She collaborates with the flutist Jonathan Cabral. Their record recordings have been described by American Record Guide as marvelous and actually beautiful. She is a past president of the American Harp Society and a past editor of the World Harp Congress Review. In 2014, the World Harp Congress recognized her for outstanding service and dedication as an editor of the review. She is the author of articles published widely and is recognized as an authority of the works of Henri Trenier. Her students have won international and national pri first prizes, hold orchestra and university positions published significant editions and articles, lead some of the largest secondary harp school programs in the USA, and exchange through arts leadership and founded innovative chamber ensembles. She is now serving on the board of directors of the World Harp Congress and for the United, United States International Harp Competition. She is currently professor of music, harp music and area chair of strings at the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign, where she directs an annual summer harp class each June. I think that's a little introduction of our great guest, Anne Young, the harp star, which uh, it's really my big pleasure to meet and of course not meet, we know for a long time, but to you to get her to meet and to of course welcome her very warmly to our interview today and that she made time for us. And hello, welcome. Hello, Jana. Hello, everyone. It's so good to see you and I'm so honored to be here and also just to thank you because this has really just been an amazing project and you know channel that you've put together with everything. It's really, especially during this time and I think beyond now, so. Thank you so much. And I'm so, so, so really happy to see you also. And I'm so sorry for some wrong pronunciation of some of the words and the name, <laughs> but you certainly will talk about it. So you can of course also say it correctly and just just, just explain everything but and i first of all i'm so glad that you made time for us and that we have now really time for being able to share your life your experiences and of course um, anything so as i start always with everybody of course i would love to know how did you start the harp? well um i didn't find out how i started the harp until pretty much 20 years after i had been playing the harp and it's because of my mother and what it was was um, she was an international student um, from and so she went um, from there. My parents were born in southern China and then they were in Hong Kong, Kowloon, Macau area. And so they came to the States to study for college. And mm -hmm. so she had gone to the University of Oregon in Eugene, Oregon on the West Coast. And she lived as, you know, many students when you travel from far in a, a, what we call a cooperative housing or co-op. And one of the women who lived in that co-op of her under the staircase had a very tiny harp, one, you know, a small harp, mm -hmm. which she just wanted to play. I mean, because, of course, you know, uh, couldn't afford to have music lessons or anything of that. So she was fascinated by it. And um, she actually, um, while she was in Oregon, she was able to finally take some music lessons. And I think she, you know, she had quite some talent with it because she 
I think she's had some piano lessons and I think could play the Beethoven for at least within a year. So I, I'm going to say that she had an aptitude for it. But so what happened was um, that my parents had moved to Fresno, California, which is in the Central Valley. And she found out there was one harp teacher, harpist in the area, which was my first harp teacher, Penny Hawk Beavers. Um, and so she took me to see Penny and I was probably, I believe maybe three and a half or so. And Penny was like, no, <laughs> no, get her some like, you know, music theory lesson, something. I mean, because Penny was really, as I really working full time, freelancing, teaching everything, recording, you know, so I'm sure she's like, I don't have time to teach you how to read music um, or, you know, anyways, I mean, I'm sure I was very tiny, too. <laughs> so uh, so it wasn't till maybe uh, let's see, maybe fourth grade. I, I've stopped counting maybe like at eight and a half or so that mm -hmm. she took me back to Penny. And by that point, I'd had some keyboard and piano lessons. And then I started I, she took me to where Pen Penny was playing. And Penny's like, okay, pluck a string. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. You know, she's like, what do you think? I was like, oh, yeah. So, you know, like that's that's interesting because, you know, my parents had been exposing me to mm -hmm. learning lots of things as a kid. Try this out. You see. And so that's how I started with the harp. And <laughs> did you say correctly that your parents were not musicians, right? They were just um, in the United States, but they were no. not. No, no, they they're not mm -hmm. professional musicians. I would say they're, uh, they're they have art. They they're both quite artist. They were both quite artistic in different ways. So, but mm -hmm. not not in music. <laughs> they didn't pursue music studies. And My mother they... still plays and stuff. So you know, mm -hmm. like she, as as she's learning both keyboard, she always whenever she still has the troubadour harp, the first mm -hmm. harp they have, and so <laughs> occasionally she would say when I visit her, she wants me to give her a lesson again, but um, I wasn't a very patient teacher when I tried to teach her <laughs> when I was first starting. Um, so that's yeah. sweet. So, and what, what was the edu like the education of your parents? They were which direction they were educated? Well, they so they came quite. I mean, they came maybe. I, I'm not sure because it's all <laughs> it's their stories. They may have came to the states maybe when they're 16 or 17, and so. Mm -hmm. And my mother had wanted to uh, study medicine, but at that time it was you know it, it, there were challenges. One for you know if you're a woman, first of all, if you're mm -hmm. um, from abroad, if you're mm -hmm. not of you know, of the, of, of, of the means to do so. Um, mm -hmm. So she went to Oregon and um, she did study mathematics. And so that's where, and my father, he had come to the States and this is before, of course, it's hard to imagine, but you, if you can imagine, you know, it's hard to get information. So he came to the States and he first came to the Midwest. Actually, this is kind of funny. He came to the Midwest and he went to one university Uh, St. Louis. And then mm -hmm. he had a friend actually at Urbana-Champaign, Illinois, who was going to say, so like, oh, why don't you come up here? You know, come saying, you know, okay. So he came here. <laughs> so he actually did his undergraduate degree in Illinois. And uh, the way he chose his major was he looked through the entire course catalog to see which major did not require a speech communication class. Oh. <laughs> So that's the major he chose, which was engineering physics. Um, mm -hmm. Luckily, there was a, or amazingly, there was a very a famous physics professor here, John Bardeen, who uh, eventually won two Nobel prizes. And so he, that's what he did for his undergraduate. And then um, they had a sort of circuitous route. So he was eventually graduate school. It was the 1960s. There's a lot of perhaps like turmoil now, some, mm -hmm. our president, Uh, John F. Kennedy was, you know, assassinated about the time and, you know, that affected him deeply. And so eventually the funny thing is that they eventually met in Manhattan, Kansas, <laughs> of all places. So what had happened is um, my father um, had followed a friend to University of Oregon and then his father apparently said, get back to school and uh, which um, was somehow they ended up and my mother had followed an advisor in mathematics to the mm -hmm. Kansas State University um, in Manhattan, Kansas. And so that's actually where they met and that's where they finished their uh, their doctoral degrees. <laughs> my mother did finish it before my father because um, he uh, studied all in another. I think he was going to almost finish in physics and then he eventually switched mm -hmm. to math. And so what happened was um, they both en en ended up starting in mathematics and then they, he, my father eventually found a job in California, Fresno, where I was born. And mm -hmm. from there they were teaching at the 
California State University um, mm -hmm. of Fresno, at, it, at, not when he quite started, but it became that. And then at the time when um, computer science started to develop, uh, mm -hmm. they they went for retraining and um, the father really was key to founding the department in computer science there. So they ended up eventually in computer science uh, from all that. So <laughs> long story short, they're not professional musicians. <laughs> That's so lucky that they've settled in the in United States because if they will return both to, to the, the China, both were from China, right? Um, originally born in Southern China and then, you know, they mm -hmm. like a number of families, tr mm -hmm. you know, um, traveled to, mm -hmm. you know, um, to the, territories around Hong Kong. So my mother's family first went to Macau. Um, mm -hmm. And then my father's family event, uh, went to Kowloon, which, you know, right across the harbor from Hong Kong Island. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, at that, yeah, so they they went there. That's where how they, they I think they formative years, very young years were in the Hong Kong mm -hmm. area. So but that's uh, amazing. Can you imagine that they did not know them each other when they were in China, but then they mm -hmm. met in, in the United States, you know, it's so in Kansas. <laughs> and they both actually went to Oregon. I mean, my dad went there for like a day or two, <laughs> as you know, perhaps what in our youth, if we're able to do things on <laughs> spur of the moment. Um, yeah, so it's quite, it's quite lucky. And I mean, I think, I think that's something maybe, maybe comes out of today is it's just sometimes it's really just lucky. I met you when you happen to be at, you know, you came to the States and studied at Indiana for one year. I mean, it's or not even one year. So it's, it's, it's kind of really amazing. Exactly. <laughs> it's for a reason, but it's such a romantic thing, you know, sometimes when you, you find out that and then comes a child like you, such a gifted child who is really amazing. <laughs> I always admire you. You're playing, uh, you're really, it's unbelievable. You're always so, you know, so spontaneous with the playing. It was everything so natural. You were always like, you do also the, uh, you can also improvise, right? As I remember. Uh, <laughs> I, well, I mean, I, I, I was comfortable with um, not like really truly improvising, like, but because I never really did. But, you know, I think, and I really have to credit, um, Penny for my first harp teacher because she really mm -hmm. was like, um, you know, actually she she did both popular harp and class. I mean, she's on the recording for the Star Wars, not the movie, but the soundtrack mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. And so, and she, you know, was um, part of the first publishers with um, what used to be Faith Carmen Publishing, FC Publishing, which became Vanderbilt Editions now. And so they had mm -hmm. Stella Castellucci, Eleanor Fell, Jack mm -hmm. Nevergall, I know who, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. was quite close with Penny. And so um, for our lessons, you know, she would, she would always have me like, okay, you know, we, we'd have, um, of course, say, I don't remember this. So these, these are other people's stories telling me. <laughs> I do remember that she'd be like, okay, that was, that was good. Let's, let's actually practice it now. Because, <laughs> you know, you're busy as a kid. So I would sometimes say, read my lessons. Although, I've heard I didn't have to be told to practice. I don't know which is true. But what she would do, though, is she would um, say, hey, at, for early on, she would give me like a melody um, and just say, okay, just, you know, here's the chord, here's the harmony, just, mm -hmm. you know, add some notes. There's no, you know, there's no wrong notes. I mean, those are ones you play, they're ones you can choose to play. And so in that sense, you know, I, it, it, I, it was not so literal. I mean, you had to be very, of course, um, know what was happening and respect what was on the page but also it was also okay feel feel comfortable it's okay um so i really credit her with sort of you know kind of i, I just didn't from the beginning i didn't learn that i should be really <laughs> i didn't learn that i i, I that i should I could, could play wrong notes, you know, I should treat them as like, oh, these are notes you chose. Now, the funny thing about that, though, is that later I did sometimes get like, you sometimes take too much something, you know, <laughs> you know, like you like, it's just too much time or too much this. And I do remember at one point when I was trying to improvise playing like a holiday music gig, my mother was like, those sound like wrong notes. Cause like, oh, those are like, added notes like that's a night nice. well she's like you just sound like wrong notes <laughs> so to each do our own you know so, but i would say you know thank you but i mean i mean, always was and part of it too because i didn't come from a musical household in some ways i always mm -hmm. feel in some ways it's um it's kind of always discovering it for me you know it's i'm not to presume because it's like i i don't I, I, in that sense, that's what I've so appreciated about, you know, kind of each, your playing particularly, you know, if you want to speak about just being completely in tune with yourself and everything, so. 
<laughs> and when you when you had the first harp, when did you get your really first uh, pedal harp? Oh, pedal harp. Um, <laughs> actually, there's a story for that. I think I, you know, at that I started on a troubadour lever harp, and then mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, usually depending on how you progress, and then Penny, you, you know, said, well, you know, we're moving through the repertoire, you consider getting pedal harp, which of, mm -hmm. of course is a significant investment. Um, and, you know, but on the other hand, you know, if parents, their education, you know, you always want to say, okay, you, if you, from what you can learn, you know, then you'll, you should just invest in it. Otherwise, you know, so what happened was um, my father <laughs> uh, ordered, finally looked through and, and ordered the harp from um, Line and Healing, Chicago, um, mm -hmm. without telling Penny, <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> So what happened though, and actually, okay, this will be, this will confirm an urban legend. So what happened was they ordered the harp. Petty had no idea that he had ordered harp. I don't think maybe even I had an idea or my parents, I mean, I'm sure my parents discussed it at that point. So the harp came in December. And at that time there was a shipping dispute, labor dispute. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure they were not thrilled to ship a very big black box from Chicago, Illinois, all the way out to California. So the big harp trunk arrives and um, there's a little hole on the outside and like with a little bit of chalk around the hole, perfect little round hole. And we're like, oh, maybe it's like an air hole, you know, <laughs> Oh we open up the harp <laughs> and, you know, uh, it, he had ordered a walnut 23 when, when they mm -hmm. had, um, they were still making that mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. And we look at the harp and there is a, there is a, there is a bullet stuck in the knee block with some of the wood is there. Mm -hmm. We're like going, is this like, I don't think it's supposed to be like, we're looking at the catalog. We still have it like, I don't think that's supposed to be there. Maybe it's there to straighten <laughs> There's a little mm -hmm. shards of woods. Well, it turns out, and it's actually true. Here's a bullet. My mother, oops, there's a bullet. My mother saved everything. <laughs> so no. we caught him. So they shot the harp. I think they, I, clearly someone knew where to shoot the harp. And I don't recommend this, but the knee block did stop the bullet. <laughs> it was still stuck in the harp. Mm -hmm. And so called up the factory and they're like, no. You know what you mean the harp's been shot are you kidding and finally like no no i really i think it really there's so what they did is like we said okay well if you we could ship it back we'll fix it. and of course you know my parents like they're like no we don't want a shot harp we don't fix it. and then so they actually said okay we have another harp on the floor which actually was a natural 23 and they mm -hmm. said okay we can send that and you know at that time what did my what did we know so we're like okay hey it costs more sure we'll take the 23. <laughs> So it arrived, beautiful 23, um, without a bullet in the knee box. And I came, and I just remember when we called Penny and or we went to the lesson and told her, and she's like, You did what? Because <laughs> she's, you know, she, like any professional harpist, you want to pick a harp for the sound. Not only that, she's from Joliet, Illinois, which is very near to Chicago. So almost, she would have been happy to go back and, like, pick a harp you know, or, you know, help with that. Um, so she did show up to her house and she tried it and she's like, played it. And she's like, okay, so good. I, and I honestly think now she was like, all right, they've already like had this trauma and they've invested in, boy, if I tell them something else, to <laughs> just like, stop. But anyway, so she said, you know, she's like, okay, it's good. And, and it was a very, it was a good harp. I mean, it's, it's it was a good harp. Although late, years later, I think I had it regulated in a, uh, one of the technicians said that, oh, you know, it, it's an it's a nice harp. It's not the harp for what you do, whichever that means, whatever I do. <laughs> so it's a nice harp. But um, yeah, so that's how I got started with the pedal harp, and that was the first pedal harp. Oh or my actually, God. not a second one. <laughs> what a story! I got. We have also really like from Sharon. She's with us, so it's like lovely to see you. And she also said, "What a story!" I. Unbelievable! Just tell me, did you did you ship really finally the the walnut harp back or how? Yes. You... So I someone from the early 1980s has a walnut 23 that's probably at a rebuilt neck. That is that harp. <laughs> but <laughs> that was my inauspicious beginning. Oh, it's so good to see Sharon here. She was. I just was for with the association for the art of the harp on Turkey, and I promised today to not mute my. <laughs> Like as I was telling Jan earlier, I accidentally played the last piece with the mic. I off uh, off, you know, so then they had to stay there and still listen to it again. But I don't have the magic of editing. 
<laughs> and the heart which is behind you, it's also, I can see that it's a lion and healing, but it's the Salcedo model. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Do you have also the still the 23, the natural one? Do you, the um, you know, I, I still do, you know, and, and it's something, you know, I think probably parents that can identify this, you know, at one point I was like, oh, you know, um, given all the things, maybe we should sell it or, you know, something. And I think, you know, considering and the more, you know, reflecting on having, you know, mm -hmm. my father passed away and cleaning this, is just how much that instrument meant and what, what they did mm -hmm. to, to afford it which they really couldn't afford it and you think about everything at that time so i could tell at you know it was emotionally you know it couldn't i could couldn't you know not keep it until you know that respectfully until that point unless you know we'll see that thing so but yeah so we still have it it's it's still mm -hmm. a, a nice harp it should probably be loved a lot more than it has been <laughs> But um, yes, I have a Salzedo now. I have another as well. We might as well talk about that story. So this Salzedo, um, I, I I got used um, actually while I was at IU, um, sleeping around a bit, and there was a, a dentist who was uh, selling it because he was going. He was there. I mean, that's one thing about the the. I don't know if you remember, at the time there was just visiting students from you know all over. You know, not just mm -hmm. degree students, and so he was selling this harp. Um, cause he was going to get another harp. And, um, so, mm -hmm. and I love the, the, the middle bottom register of it. It just, it was very, you know, I don't know. I just liked it. So I got it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know if Miss McDonald was so thr thrilled with it because the top I always struggled with a long story short, many years later. Um, so this harp, basically this harp, the only thing that's left original on it probably is the column because when I moved from IU, the knee block again, I mean, this is the sign for my time in the harp world was shifting. So I was like, okay, we're going to, when I was moving back to California after school, it's like, well, maybe I need to fix this before it gets out mm -hmm. there, explodes and that. So I had the neck replaced, but at that time as well, then had the new spacing that they were putting on it. So it's like, okay, this mm -hmm. seems like a good investment. And then, um, but well, you know, here. The, the sound when you have changed all of that uh oh that yeah the sound body was fine it's just no. the neck was changed and so okay. they did the okay. spacing you know mm -hmm. and, and the new spacing and regulation so it was like okay great yeah <laughs> i'll get the latest newest still same harp um mm -hmm. and this harp was i got it used and it was partially the prize money from the competitions and then mm -hmm. my Mm -hmm. I'm sure my parents won't enjoy sharing these many stories. And one of their cars got stolen. And so part of the insurance money helped pay for this harp, part of it, you know, I mean, a use. Mm -hmm. So long story short, it came back. And then many years later, I was, I had to get the action. So wait, no, I had to get the base assembly fixed because I, you know, moved a lot, a lot of things. So um, mm -hmm. had it sent to the factory. And the one thing I said, because I was like, okay, whatever you do, save the soundboard because the voice of the harp it's like that's mm -hmm. the one thing like whatever else you find fix you know we can fix it so <laughs> after about three weeks up there to repair i get a call from steve fritzman and he's like i have some unfortunate news to share with you and i'm like yes and he's like well they were fixing the bottom because the base had assembly to be fixed and because it had been worked on by someone else who had put some screws in it to strengthen it that they didn't know were, were going to be there um, while they were drilling um they hit the, the metal and so there is sparks and of course there's all this wood dust in the factory so it caught fire <laughs> it's like apparently flames shooting out of the harp at six feet i mean actually the the person working out had some burns luckily not too bad apparently but and it got the fire out but then he's like well so what happened was we hit the screw and uh, we didn't anticipate it and the sound body now has these scorch marks and we can't you know we can't vouch for the integrity of the sound body so we're gonna mm -hmm. replace the soundboard uh, sound the whole sound body that means the whole body of the harp and i was thinking it's like okay now for years i'd struggled with the top zone part of me is like Oh first God. of all going what and part of me's like well maybe it actually might be a little better and, talk. and i didn't you know at that point that was my harp you know only harp so i was like well okay mm -hmm. so so it came back a stranger an arranged marriage and yeah. um it took a few years and actually the second recording i did with my flutist is right mm -hmm. after i'd gotten it back but i actually i wouldn't have picked it off the floor but it's actually mm -hmm. really 
developed and it's easier to play than my, the original sound. So basically the only thing that's pretty much left on this harp that's original is the column, which still has the scratches that I put on it. So <laughs> I must tell, I, I have never heard anybody to have any story with the harp and you have already two stories with the harp. It was only two times. Don't tell me that it has been two times. And I, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I pray that it will not be the third time. My goodness, and this is incredible, really, it's incredible. But so, it is harp now. Yeah, yeah. So now, now it's it's working. It's fine. But it's kind of funny because I still have the same harp, but it's really two different harps. And mm -hmm. the first flute and harp CD was on the original harp, different recording engineer too. And the second one is with this one when it was very young. <laughs> yeah, Julia. Who is also, of course, saying that oh. a great sound. Your sound is awesome. Anyway, oh, and we know she's that. So sweet. <laughs> oh, Julie. Oh, you're so, oh, so she's so sweet. She's amazing too. <laughs> we used to compete against each other, but you know, <laughs> and she, she does triathlon. So she's the harpist with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir with uh, Utah. And has this great collection. Of, uh, I correct me if I get wrong. Uh, Harpy Hall Halloween, which is it's kind of inspired by the haiku for harp by Suzanne McDonald mm -hmm. Linda Wood, and it's kind of just fun for beginning students. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> how lovely! How lovely! <laughs> not, not to forget, we I have to just show that we have Veronica, we have Lisa together with us, Allah as well, and here. Oh. I don't know if I say correctly the name, but it's lovely. Thank you very much to everybody to be with us today. And and because this is incredible, these stories are incredible. <laughs> is true, it's unbelievable. Really unbelievable. <laughs> I don't remember. Did you have your own harp at the IU when I was there, or did you not? Um, you know, I think I might have bought this one right. I don't remember when I bought it, but it, that would have been a year because it'd been a year right after. Because mm -hmm. you were there in 1990 to 91, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was right mm -hmm. after the HS competition, and I think I did get mm -hmm. this one during that time. Mm -hmm. although, <laughs> although I I can't remember. They have numbers for the harps there, and I remember <laughs> there were several harps that were favorites or too well loved. So mm -hmm. I think that was part of that too. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's incredible. And you were born in California mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then you studied there. And how did you get uh, through all until Indiana? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, it's a short story because I only ended up at Indiana for all my degrees. But so in Fresno, um, you know, so in Penny, it taught me for some reason. And then, I mean, this is one thing I really, it, it's really come revealed to me like just how many people that you know because she's quite active in mm -hmm. you know the harp professional harp field and community and service wise and things so there are a lot of people I met that um, Penny knew that I didn't really know at that point but that she also uh, encouraged me at one point she's like you know I've taught you what I can teach you and it's time for you to learn you know some other things too that someone else can teach you that so I think before my junior in my junior year of high school um, you know Suzanne McDonald was doing Hidden Valley master classes on the coast of um, mm -hmm. Central California uh, during like the holiday time. So in 1987, maybe it's the first time I went mm -hmm. there. So mm -hmm. it was great, you know, first time meet him. And then it's for my senior year of high school, um, she encouraged me to try to find, you know, another teacher. You know, I'd still see Penny and I remember Penny <laughs> showing up. Uh, well, I'll, I'll come to Penny's story in a second. But um, so she encouraged me to contact some teachers. So we looked at maybe uh, trying to take a lesson with like either Ann Adams, who was the San Francisco Ballet uh, Symphony Orchestra mm -hmm. harpist, or, you know, Joanne Tarofsky, who's at, you know, in the Los Angeles area at Coburn Conservatory. And, well, at that time, with the University of Southern California and before mm -hmm. Coburn. Um, and so we ended up, um, I, so for my senior year of high school, we ended up because Ann Adams was, you know, of course, this, you know, amazing person in our history in so many ways, but she was quite busy, of course. And, you know, mm -hmm. she didn't need to teach this kid from the Bay Area either, you know, and with my parents' schedules, because they both worked basically, they were both uh, professors at eventually at the mm -hmm. local university and mm -hmm. quite busy. So we ended up um, taking, going to LA and then I've been into LA at, uh, for maybe some regional competitions, you know, uh, which was, so I'd met Joanne who had been welcoming to her studio and also like some of the Hollywood great harpists like Ann Mason Stockton, you know, and Dorothy mm -hmm. Remsen, you know, so 
who knew, you know, I, I didn't really know because I was just really lucky to be there. And so we would drive down, usually my father would drive me down to Los Angeles maybe once a month or every three weeks during my senior year of high school when between the other high school things I was doing at that point, which is which is a long drive. <laughs> at that point, still a long drive, but you know, longer drive back in the 1980s. Um, and, and traffic, but so we would go there. And I, so my senior year, I did take lessons with Joanne when I could, um, which I really am grateful for her because she fixed my rhythm, you know, all that freedom you're talking about. <laughs> He's like, okay, you got to play the beat though. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, among other things, you know, and of course, you know, very, you know, dedicated and, and really, you know, and I think, uh, you know, beautiful sound you know she's on playing on for many of the uh soundtracks that they're recording there in the LA area now so mm -hmm. um so then what also happened is then there was and I think my junior year of high school they had the finals of the American String Teacher Association solo competition um in Indiana IU that was a location they moved around and they don't mm -hmm. have the harp competition anymore but back then that was like one of the few things that happened so mm -hmm. um they had the finals there so I went I I I, I we had to send recordings and pre-recordings and things mm -hmm. um and um so we had in the finals and so the finals are in IU um and that point and actually Liz Hayden was one of the finalists and she won eventually <laughs> mm -hmm. and um as well as Gillian Bennett Sella who's the principal mm -hmm. of Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra mm -hmm. and um, Emily Lawrence who's uh editing the American Harp Journal now and we used to be teach at the San Francisco Conservatory of Musicology mm -hmm. so and Hong Young, I think, was the other one. So there's a few of us. So there was, and actually, <laughs> how do I think about it? So everyone was in the same thing. And it wasn't just me, because it was all the bowed string instruments. So eventually, after that, they shifted where they'd have like an older division and younger division, because mm -hmm. I was in high school and, you know, they were pre professionals, pre professionals already. Um, so I ended up at IU. That's where I met like Ella Schmidt and just the IU department first time, saw the campus. Um, I hadn't even thought about it for college because at that point I was going to I was I'd been doing music but I had not really even thought about you know majoring or pursuing it like full time mm -hmm. um, and then the next next hall next year I went back to the Hidden Valley um, class at Suzanne McDonald and I said oh you're going to uh, we didn't realize you're going to college so soon you know because I was I was younger um, mm -hmm. than the usual age because of mm -hmm. one starting a little earlier in school mm -hmm. and then also mm -hmm. skipping one grade and a late mm -hmm. late birthday. So um, uh, so I was like, you know, and so they had heard me in the competition, they heard me at the class, you know, and I'd been doing some things, but not, you know, full time. And then so somewhere around spring, <laughs> February for those, I mean, uh, applying for colleges, I, I had applied to Indiana um, for the university because, but I hadn't applied to music school. I didn't know there was a separate audition. I had applied to, uh, I'm gonna confess this now, I had applied to the music school of U the University of Southern California where Joanne was teaching, but I did not apply to the university. Because I, at that point, I, I had thought, oh, I, I was really thinking about some other universities to go to, which, you know, I'm gonna apologize now to all those uh, teachers out there that um, on the other end now is like, okay, yeah, I've been there where you're like, you think you'll never see these people again or you don't know what's gonna happen. So what happened is about February, Suzanne McDonald called me up on the phone <laughs> and she's like, so, you know, I you're going to college and you know, I, I think you're Indiana. And then I was like, oh, if I come to study music, I definitely wanna study with you, you know? <laughs> Which is like, I'm talking to the Dean about scholarships tomorrow. Are you coming or not? <laughs> Because I hadn't applied to the music school yet mm -hmm. um, or something, you know, so she's like, where is her application? <laughs> so, and, you know, and I was like, oh, well, like, okay, yeah, I'll study with you. Still thinking, oh, I can change my mind May 1st. Okay, scholarship, good. <laughs> uh, so, um, luckily she called me because otherwise mm -hmm. I'd be probably mm -hmm. doing something else. <laughs> Um, and so we had a serious conversation, you know, mm -hmm. my parents, you know, particularly my father, and he's like, you know, if, if you're going to go, and this isn't anything, because really, we didn't really know the music field at all, really, you know, but mm -hmm. 
I had other interests. It's like university option versus conservatory, and not really having a real clue. And I would advise mm -hmm. people differently based on what they want to do and the mm -hmm. situation. Um, he said, well, if you want to do this, then it seems like, you know, she's where you should go. This is the person, you know, the center of so many things, you know, um, and you already said, so I was like, okay, okay, I can go to college. I'll double major. I'll, you know, do it, see how it goes. And <laughs> so I went to IU, which was right after the very first USA International Heart Competition in 1989. Mm -hmm. um, so it was quite, you know, and you had in that class, you know, Kirsten Agresta Copley now or Liz Hainan mm -hmm. at come back, you know, so it was kind of, you know, a wonderful class or just, you know, the whole world is kind of there in some ways, you know, the whole world, but, you know, really you could meet the world there, which I think mm -hmm. is one of the great things about it. Um, when I got there, I found out that if I only did one major, um, I could graduate early. So I was like, okay, well, that seems like a good thing. I'll graduate early. I can stay for a master's degree, be the same time, just mm -hmm. done it, still can do something else. <laughs> you know, I mean, continue, like, that doesn't close that door, right? Mm -hmm. I'll do this and see how it goes. And then, uh, so I was in the graduate, of course, we were on, we were on the competition circuit, because that's kind of a, you know, what we we're doing at that point. And depending, there weren't as many orchestra jobs opening, but then they were, you know, it kind of goes in mm -hmm. cycles. So mm -hmm. uh, then I got, uh, then they had a, a graduate teaching assistantship there, or the AI, Associate Instructor mm -hmm. Harp, and Kirsten mm -hmm. Agresta was the one before me in the me. So then I had that, and I was like, oh, okay, I've got that. You know, if I just wanted to get a terminal degree or doctor degree, do some something, you know, way, way back when before music, everything, I kind of what had, you know, thought, okay, I'll see how far. So I was like, okay, let's just get it. Let's just do it. <laughs> you know? And that, so that's how I ended up staying at Indiana for all my degrees. And, you know, also like would early on, they just revised the artist diploma program. And because, um, you know, they, we had, we played so much repertoire. I think, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember the year that you you won the USA and and got second in Israel is that they were very close together like because they had to move the Israel competition I think February of ninety two mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. USA was in July in ninety two, but they were completely different repertoire like mm -hmm. totally different nothing was the same mm -hmm. I mean you could do the free choice you know different mm -hmm. journals so you had enough repertoire if you you wanted to do that so I ended up those are things that <laughs> that's 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 a long story. <laughs> Yeah, for Indiana. So. It's true. So you stayed in Indiana for five years? Or? Oh, you're so kind. No, I, I have to always count. I, I think it's nine years. <laughs> I, I my my doctorate, I got it in nineteen ninety-eight. So yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> so it, when I was so, such an amazing class of different generations there, and I'm always like, oh, okay. <laughs> and yeah. don't you miss Indiana then when you were so long time there? It's, it's really like your second home, right? Well, you know, I mean, I think the, it's 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 not so much the place as the people, and I think that's what mm -hmm. I miss the most. And, and right now, actually, I'm in the next state over. I've gone from IU to UI, U of I. <laughs> so it's not that far, but um, you know, and and I did spend nine years there, and I think you know, kind of, um, and I, I do really think it was the people. So in that sense, you know, and 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 since then, I've been able maybe not to get back as much as I. I, I should or can or sometimes would like to but so in that sense it's been the people that have been you know um that you met there and then you know that's the part that i i kind of missed and it's so wonderful when we do have these you know congresses or gatherings because that's sometimes the only time you will see each other unless you're actually you know you could see each other if you you're able to travel which now mm -hmm. is you know questionable but really so that's yeah. that's kind of it they're 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 all over the place now <laughs> or on the internet <laughs> Absolutely, like now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People, I just want yeah. to also say, show now some of the of the messages there because uh, this is. A, oh yeah, yeah. This is the thing. Of course, he is also one. She was oh always. no, <laughs> Julie is being humble. She, you know, I have a funny story. Julie appreciates it. So 1990, which was um, the American Heart Society, which uh, I'll apologize to Sonia. So they used to have. Uh, the scholarship competition that we, oops, my swing, there we go. Um, 
we used to be called the Ruth Lorraine Close Awards. And that was a gift mm -hmm. actually made. Um, and Sally Maxwell, who was teaching at the University of Oregon, where my mother, her mother taught there as a harpist before. And mm -hmm. I think we can talk more about her later. She's a very good friend of Penny. Um, they mm -hmm. would um, administrate those awards. So that's what now has become the Ann Adams Awards, and then they've had the Lion and Healy Awards. So trying to keep the scholarship mm -hmm. tradition. So mm -hmm. in 1990, Julie had already won, I think, so, but at AHS and um, what would have been close awards. Um, they're starting to get so many competitors in our age group, which was 21 and under. And so they made the first stage. They said, okay, we'll have the first, the first round is the close awards, and then they'll forward you know, maybe I forget six or, you know, a finalist, and that would be the AHS solo competition. Mm -hmm. So we did that in San Antonio, Texas, and Julie won. In fact, they don't rank the winners, but Julie's name was the first one listed. Oh, <laughs> and so was Park Stigney, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, other EOS. And then, uh, and then we did the second round and it ended up slightly flipped and, you know, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's um, lovely. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> and yeah. also from Julie, which written that such great legends. Oh. Uh, yes, association. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I have a funny story about those competitions because um, and this goes back to probably what some what I do is like so Penny was very busy with Sally mm -hmm. and they would help they would organize these um uh close these scholarship auditions. I mean, there's, an, as you know, any event, it's an incredible amount of work and logistics, especially the harp, or you need volunteer. I mean, you just need, you need help. And it's always, you know, it's easy to see only one side of it or say the things that could be different when, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, I know, okay, that could have been better that we can learn from, but you know, there is an incredible amount of time and dedication put into it. So mm -hmm. early on, um, in LA, and that's actually where I met some of the LA harpists, you know, there was the close awards there. And I remember um, as a young student back in high school, I said, oh, well, why don't you come help out, you know, with the competition? And so, uh, and I remember, <laughs> so I was the bench kid. So I would move the bench for each competitor on the stage and off. And and I listened to all of them because I thought it was fascinating. They were playing, well, at that time before I, I played impromptu 4A for 10 years, but they all had to play the impromptu by 4A. Mm -hmm. um, another, I don't remember the other piece, but I just remember seeing a very young Park Stickney who must've been mm -hmm. like, I don't know, 15 or 16 doing mm -hmm. that. Rana Park, you know, like, so, I mean, mm -hmm. all these people, he was playing classical harp. Oh yes, yes, yes. Actually, I mean, and 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 the year that Julie and I were doing HS, you know, he he was one of the close yeah. award winners too, and prize winners. So, yeah, he absolutely. I mean, those fingers move for. <laughs> you have to be able to move, but that's how, and that's where I we kind of met mm -hmm. Park as well. And mm -hmm. I think you know it's been really kind of wonderful to see what he's doing continues to be so quick about things. And then mm -hmm. yeah, so but it was it was fun, I, <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you when you finish your your studies at the IU, did you immediately go to teach, or what was between, or how they are, what was your way after your studies? I moved back into my dad's apartment. I had no job. I had. <laughs> I mean, and it's a difficult time. I mean, not a difficult mm -hmm. time, but it's always a question, you know, it's, uh, when, mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of the will of you, you go into this is that, you know, mm -hmm. you either, sometimes it, everything works out, but yeah, there was no definite plan. Um, so I, I moved back to California, finished my degree, mm -hmm. uh, actually, wait, was, yes. And so in some ways I questioned is like, well, okay, you know, keep doing this should I move you know I thought oh I like the San Francisco barrier should I just move there and just start mm -hmm. doing things and you know building building a life there plus you know seeing if there's jobs or orchestral things do I want to go back to school do I want to do something else you know and, and it, it really was a time and I among other you know whatever personal things were going on and so mm -hmm. the good thing is that so I graduated in 98 um, the next year in 1999 had already booked the Carnegie Hall debut recital, which was good in June. And then we had your Harp Congress in Prague, which, you know, a program performed there. So that was in July. But I have to admit, it was it was a time when I was like, hmm, you know, a big mm -hmm. questioning time. And I, I have to admit that it's about February of 99. I was like, oh, yeah, I really need to, like, start that recital. <laughs> I mean, really. Um, but what had happened in that year, um, when I was back in California, 
there happened to be two national searches going on for a teaching position, which mm -hmm. um, just happened to be uh, the director of the school of music where I teach at now, um, James mm -hmm. C. Scott. He had been an associate dean at IU and he'd gone to Illinois, my university mm -hmm. now, as a director. And I, I saw him at the flute convention because I played a piece there, a chamber piece. And he said, oh, you know, mm -hmm. we are going to be searching for, a, you know, part time. He was very precise, which I mean, about this, he's like, it's going to be part time, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, he was, mm -hmm. I think, a, a very good colleague of Suzanne McDonald. So in his mm -hmm. vision, you know, if you, <laughs> if you want to play these pieces, you need to invest in, you know, the, the, the students that are going to be able to play if you want to do these things, whether it's an opera thing. So, um, which is not always the case, you know. Um, so he had told me about it. And so eventually, eventually they, they were doing two searches for uh, positions with universities that year, um, both at Illinois and mm -hmm. then at Louisiana State University, um, which was very unusual, actually. And, and it's, mm -hmm. I'm, they have started announcing some teaching positions mm -hmm usually almost part-time if it's harp. Um, and I don't know how this situation is gonna affect all that. So happened mm -hmm. to be that that was kind of a timing wise, it ended up being quite fortune one that they decided to do a search. Mm -hmm. Two, it was a administration that was supportive and familiar with, you know, if you want to invest in developing this program, you know, mm -hmm. invest in developing what you need to do to do the other things that you wanna do. So that's how mm -hmm. I ended up at Illinois. <laughs> Luckily. And because just to coming back for your recital in Carnegie Hall, you were presenting there the uh, the Bach Goldberg's uh, variation at the time. Well, yeah. So what happened was um, among the not practicing much for most of that fall after I finished school, um, my father had uh, always loved loved that that music. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for whatever reasons, and uh, he was not. I think you know he was artistic and. A, different way than these things and so he just he 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 just loved that piece and all mm -hmm. the very different pieces like oh why didn't you know would I, I this would be great on the harp it was his idea actually in a lot of because mm -hmm. he liked it and I thought and part of me is like oh, okay I like it too but but part of me was kind of like well you know sometimes they say the harp is a instrument that puts people to sleep so what would be better than playing the piece that's supposed to put them to sleep <laughs> I mean, that's the, so anyway, but it, it was a very gratifying thing to actually, you know, finally sit down and do, you know, so those were kind of the motivations for it. And it's an amazing, it's wonderful now to see that it's really, it's, you can do it like Sivan Blazel, Catching mm -hmm. Finch, you know, there's so many very, I mean, and because it is a piece, especially the aria that, you know, just, it's, it's just people just hear it both in whatever they're watching things are so familiar and it draws them in in a different way so yeah. but it's wonderful you were the the original you were the first one ever you know to do well, it well. <laughs> <laughs> because it of course i know that many people just take the idea of the others and actually the the original is put in well, the way to you know see, so i just would I, like to know if there is any recordings of yours because uh, you I, I would be not sad. There is a there is a not not supposedly to exist recording of the debut recital <laughs> because you're not supposed to record your own one there that mm. was recorded in a bag maybe <laughs> backstage. But I I mean I think this is part of my problem is that I always feel like mm. oh I, I I don't know if I'm really ever truly gonna be. Mm. A satisfied or that way but of course sometimes you just have to let it live as you who you, you told me before recorded for five hours today on your next recording so. i'm so tired today really absolutely oh, no. Oh, no. you're <laughs> always recording from six o'clock awake and i'm just really dying dying <laughs> such an energy during this interview so i'm so happy to be here with you so it's oh really no you're incredible yana so but yeah so i um I don't know, but I it's like also when I'm digging around in in you know history and stuff. I I don't want to presume, so I think you know I couldn't find I couldn't find an account of it. Of course, there's Kashmir, who was a student of Madame de Genly, who apparently could sight read Bach fugues on the harp, which I thought that'd be so cool if you could travel in time and actually see him do that. But I don't know. So I always say the first known. 
because really, maybe someone really did play it, you know? And so, mm -hmm. so far I haven't found it. If someone has, I'd be delighted that I can change that in my bio. But so, but you know, and also part of it too is kind of, um, you know, kind of a little bit in, in, in the field, you know, sometimes you have to say, well, this is the significance of it when you're explaining to other people or for them to go, oh, okay, you know, so, but yeah, so if, if someone else has done it earlier, I, I would be delighted to find out and I'm happy to revise mm -hmm. my book, but that's what I could find, you know, I, I'm sure people played parts of it in things and forms of it, but I, I hadn't to that point had found that, so. <laughs> no, I, I, I thought first that it was Katrin Finch who I knew that she recorded it. So that that recording or that um, ex expression of the harp, I have heard for the first time. So I thought mm -hmm. that she was the one who brought it in, but mm -hmm. now it's really nice to know that it was oh. you. And well, I mean, I played it. I did. I did not transcribe it in and publish it, and I did not make a recording for you know things. So in that sense, you know, if a tree falls in the forest, <laughs> I'm also here. So, no. but yeah. But you, you played, or it was just for one occasion. Um, you know, I did play it for a bit, and then I do, I still do play some of the variations. I definitely do play the aria. In fact, uh, one of the mm -hmm. there was a multimedia one where we played the aria, but with you know flute and cello, you know, <laughs> and tai chi, you know. So, um, but I've you know kind of I think part of you know I, I always like to sort of like keep exploring and curious things. So in that sense, I I wouldn't say I've moved on, but I've I've, I've also kind of. Sometimes you know it's good to have some space and kind of appreciate it differently in that sense. So, and did you do a lot of uh, changes in the from the original, or is it playable mostly? You know, it is playable. It really is playable. Uh, the and and the neat thing about it is, it's like I didn't write every pedal in because it's almost like mm -hmm. you have to think in that thing. So the mm -hmm. one that's very chromatic and minor, uh, you know, it's it's actually all doable. The only thing is. Um, of course, it was written for a two manual, you know, harpsichord. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of playing on top of each other, repeated notes. So mm -hmm. I think when I played it, of course, maybe some of the tempos were different choices mm -hmm. or, you know, like from if you were expecting to hear how it would sound on like a, a modern piano or harpsichord. Mm -hmm. But I, I think as long as, you know, if, if you can play it so it works for where you're transcribing it or still respects the music. So there were some mm -hmm. some some choices like that. I, don't remember. I might have used some in harmonics at some point, but mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. for for various reasons. But yeah, you really can play everything mm -hmm. on the harp. You know, well, interesting because of course the baroque harp they had more rows, like three yeah. rows. Do you think that this would be acceptable to play on the baroque harp so that you you can really play at the same time? Oh, you know? I think it would be fabulous if they could try. Someone could do a triple yeah. harp. The one of the chords, mm -hmm. bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Where you yeah. have to play the same string, <laughs> I, I, that would be great. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I would love to hear that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah, and it would yeah. be like from the baroque to the on the baroque harp. So I don't yeah. know because I have never played it, so I hardly can judge. But oh, you would be fabulous! I would love to see you play the one of the one. I was like, okay, if Yano was playing this, I know it'd be like twice as fast. But <laughs> We're gonna do it the way that my fingers can do it. Yeah, you should. No, I I will be. I will be amazing to hear you do some of it. Well, don't tell me twice because then I'm. <laughs> That'll be your next next recording. <laughs> yeah. But it's and what what else did you transcribe for the harp? What else? What was your your idea or what was your just like that you came with? Oh, you mean oh for that recital or just in general? Or in general. Well, uh, you know, I you know it depends. It goes in spurts. So that was one big thing. I mean, at one point, although I haven't published this either, <laughs> I, have, I probably have commitment issues to publishing if people aren't noticing. Uh, no, <laughs> um, at one point when uh, I did do some harp quartet arrangement. Oh, actually, you know, I did do uh, for a while. I did quite a bit of uh, harp ensemble or mm -hmm. um, arrangements. One, because we had the Pacific Harp Quartet, mm -hmm. which played at the Prague mm -hmm. Congress, and then the Pacific mm -hmm. Harp Duel of Kyojin Lee. Um, and then when I was early on in years here, you know, it, um, some wonderful students. And so like one of them is a, a transcription of the, the Disney, Disney Pixar film Up. There's just some beautiful, mm -hmm. I don't know if people remember the, there's a four minute, 30 second sequence mm -hmm. of the couple in their whole life. It's just, it's a beautiful sequence, a really quite tearful sequence. So we arranged that for Harp Quartet as a kind of work. There's four different ones and also kind of introducing that. So that I've done some of that sort of thing. And of course there's mm -hmm. the Scarlatti's and, um, mm -hmm. you know, the keyboard works in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
and some maybe a Prokofiev Romeo and Juliet ballet. I've always had loved that one. But you know, of course, people are playing piano arrangement and things. So mm -hmm. I've, I've done some harp duet arrangements for that. But mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, that's lovely. So when you do the arrangements for the duet, you can of course play it for the quartet as well, right? Um, you could, although <laughs> you have to be for the same fingers. Some of it, you know, like kind of then your ensemble has to be even even better. <laughs> or actually, you can play less notes, or someone can play like something like that. So. <laughs> And does this ensemble still exist? Do you play a lot? Uh, you know, haven't, you know, not not in more recent, well, mm -hmm. decades or so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we, we I mean, of course, it's lovely when we can get to it, but we've not, not, not in more recent years. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> But you have your duo with the flute. Can you just tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, so uh, my colleague here at the University of, of I, I mean, Jonathan Keeble, so we have an Aletheia duo and we've actually, you know, enjoyed kind of both recording, but also, um, you know, commissioning some works. And so we have two two compact disc recordings or, you know, whatever stream it is. Um, the first one was Voyage and it was um, music from the Americas, you know, and so and it's a mixture. So it's not all flute and harp. Sometimes it's just solo flute. Sometimes there's mm -hmm. I flute and harp and electronics on one of them. And then the second one, which I actually, I, I, I like the second album, um, the Song of the Black Swan, you know, from the title of the Vila Lobos work. Because um, mm -hmm. that one has, a, we, we had a fortune to have at that time, uh, the Pacifica Quartet here, and the violist was Masumi Peristad, who's now at Eastman School mm -hmm. of Music. But so we recorded the Debussy Trio, and I know it's, there's many recordings, but it's a, really one of my favorites, and it was really mm -hmm. kind of a, my previous colleague in flute, Alexander Murray, mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he was very complimentary, which really meant a lot because, you know, he's, he comes from the generation of, he knew uh, Maria Korczynska's husband, you know, back from, he's from England originally and just, you know, he's just turned 90, what, 90, anyway, but so it's just, so that, that, if there's a recording point, people knew it. And so, you know, I've done that as well as here at the school, you know, um, you know, he has a wonderful studio. So my students have been lucky to work with him and try mm -hmm. to do things. We're not just our own students, but really all the students and out there. And your CDs are still available to get, to order them? Yes, if people still buy CDs. <laughs> yeah, we, they're on yeah. Albany. And then they're also, but they're also on YouTube. But if you, if you, if you uh -huh. purchase a link, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, is there any, any special link where they can order? Um, you know, I think you can probably find them on iTunes and also the Albany mm -hmm. Records website, Amazon. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I don't look lately, but sometimes there might be someone who's selling it for a lot of money. <laughs> or <laughs> I still have, I still have some, we, we kind of bring them more as like when we play concerts, because most people aren't buying the CDs, you know, these days. So, but some do, but it, I, I like, I still like, um, It'll be interesting because it's it, part of what was fun about making these recordings was kind of having mm -hmm. a theme or something between the pieces, you know, mm -hmm. so, but now mm -hmm. we pretty much can self-select, I just want to hear that. <laughs> so, that's yeah, that's true. But I think that still the CDs has their, their own place. And I think yeah. that the people would like to have the library as even they can download it from the iTunes, they still would like to have it in, a, in the hands. It's yeah. like it's so yeah. certainly go for Amazon, go anywhere <laughs> for the and then order it, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they have some, it's a mixture. Like I said, each of our records is not just all flute and harp. Not that there's anything wrong with that at all, but, you know, just, mm -hmm. um, you know, it'll, be, it'll, it'll break it pacing. So, like, I have, like, mm -hmm. a couple of... Uh, Suzanne McDonald, Linda Wood Rollo's haikus on it, you know, and then uh, there's, a, there's a great piece that's really just fun to play by Gareth Farr. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you know, so some some fun things like that. <laughs> That's lovely. And you are not only a performer, you are not only a teacher in Illinois, but <laughs> also you were organizing so many things. You were the the publisher of the of the World Cup Congress Review and the of editor. the organization. Just tell us all these organizations. It's incredible what you have done. You have been really <laughs> <laughs> amazing. scattered everywhere. No, um, well, I mean. I mean, you know, it, it, I, again, I think it's um, so what in in Linda Wood Rollo had, a, you know, started the World Harp Congress. For, OK, the World Harp Congress started from the Harp Weeks in mm -hmm. um, the Netherlands, you know, and then, you know, when, you know, she's like, OK, it's time, you know, they, they the World Harp Congress started. And then, you know, it's kind of amazing. Linda 
I mean, it's just really amazing what she did when they first started for communication, you know, and it's kind of even like, I think it's this whole idea of communication, which now you have this platform because I'm mm -hmm. um, going to cycle back again, you know, when the first Israel harp contest, you know, that's where people met um, mm -hmm. and they went back to their respective countries like Marcel mm -hmm. Grangeny and Pierre Jamet, and they started their national harp associations to help people communicate more. I mean, I think mm -hmm. it's my understanding. And so... The World Harp Congress started, and so Linda had started these newsletters, I mean, which were typed, copied, written, translated in nine languages to start with, you know, which is just incredible because you and I lived in the age where we, before the internet, to the internet now, you know, so, um, I, I, you know, before email even, so, and, um, so Linda was, uh, decided to, and she was the founding editor, and it really became this beautiful journal, you know, yes, <laughs> Isabel Moritone is the editor now. Yes. Um, so it was really a kind of a great responsibility and honor in some ways. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's one thing in academia that they do value if you edit something. I mean, just mm -hmm. job wise, in case for those of you who are <laughs> you know, <laughs> tips for putting on your fac annual faculty report. But mm -hmm. so she started, so, and it was, it was nice. I mean, what it was neat was to hear what was going on in the world. Um, also, I think it brought together, you know, both a number of things. I mean, when I was very, very young, I mean, it probably was more known for art. You know, I, I'm sure mm -hmm. people from, you know, my years before college would have mm -hmm. had music would have been really like, huh? <laughs> you know, she's doing music? <laughs> you know, so among other things, it's just that created. So it really was kind of neat to, you know, kind of be able to do it. It was a lot. It's like, I, I mean, I, every time I would do it, it'd be just, it'd be really tiring. It's so much work actually. Um, if, especially if you want it to hopefully, you know, be balanced and both reflect what's going on, but also encourage, you know? Um, so, so I did that for 12 years. Um, and it was twice a year and we went from what pretty much was used to be, I would say hard copy, you know, we used to have to have ads mm -hmm. sent by film, scanned all of this, um, switching to digital, partially digital, then digital, and also then to color, you know, and mm -hmm. it was a big learning process too, because it wasn't just like, oh, here, here's all the materials. Okay, just, mm -hmm. you know, someone does it. You mean, because you really had to sometimes search for things. Mm -hmm. At times, you know, it was good. You, I learned, you know, at one point we had to find a new printer and that was really a interesting experience for a while <laughs> i mean uh designer i should say because uh, it was um you know there's a, there's a wonderful graphic designer who's um petro now petro brian um mm -hmm. uh, who's i think the second one i worked with um mm -hmm. and she's actually doing some of the beautiful logos for the american harp society now so i'm excited because um you know very professional and just very artistic, lots of things. So, but, you know, so finding, you know, finding those things was a good learning experience outside of music, just you know, having to like solicit bids, you know, like <laughs> um, work with sometimes that there was one point I had to work with a manager and there were different mm -hmm. versions that were coming back and you put, you, you would hopefully because everything's on a timeline and also costs money to print more of this or not, you know, um, to make, have to make some choices. And so every, every issue I, I, there's always something, <laughs> there's always something at least, no, not just something, some things I see is like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe only, maybe only one or two people will notice that, <laughs> but yeah, but it was really a privilege. It really was a great honor. And I, the one thing I do miss about it, but not, the hours on the computer is just hearing mm -hmm. from people around the world what's going mm -hmm. on. And I think, you know, it's wonderful what Isabel has put her her own mark in it. And I think that's part of one thing appreciated with, um, you know, when Linda was like, okay, <laughs> I would always still call her for advice, you know, not call, mm -hmm. but, you know, email because there's people you don't know, you know, like if some, especially when someone passes, mm -hmm. it's like, who's, mm -hmm. who's, who should be the person or who are the people that ask for this and mm -hmm. this sort of thing. So I think we've all, kind of took it in different directions, which is a good thing, you know, um, because it is an international uh, magazine. It's kind of really quite unique in a lot of ways, so. True. No, it must be amazing work, really. It must be a huge work. It's, I can't wow. even imagine because it's, uh, this is enough. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, this is what you're doing now. <laughs> just, as, just as live and it'll be forever on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand what how huge work is it, and actually, yeah. you know, 
I mean, when you said that uh, Linda was doing it in nine languages, the well, yeah, I, well, they, yeah, they would send it and get it translated and type. You know, I just it's just incredible. <laughs> I mean, now I mean, now we have the spell check. Well, actually, spell check mm -hmm. is a little too helpful sometimes, you know, <laughs> or, you know, especially like what, one of the few things I I try to do. And I heard Isabel and her her lovely interview saying, like, who knew there were so many different Englishes? And, you know, to be mm -hmm. honest, I kind of knew, but I didn't really think about it. I was like, oh, I need to fix so. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but one like one of the things I wanted to try to do, but was like, you know, at least to preserve the original names like Ayana Bushba, you know, you have accents, which, you know, uh, we don't use here. So mm -hmm. but that was like, OK, we'd have to underline, you know, my mm -hmm. wonderful, you know, she, I'd have to underline it. It's supposed to be that. And then she would have to add in all of those. But I thought, you know, it's it's cool. someone's name if we can do that, mm -hmm. you know, and then and then it's always a question because there's always different styles and different, mm -hmm. you know, voicing because some would come in, you know, in a very, very particular style and you want to preserve that. But then sometimes you're like, OK, that's where you have to kind of edit a little bit or you want to kind of help them without making it not them lose their voice as well. Mm -hmm. So it was a very interesting, very interesting time. And um, I, I, I enjoyed trying to get good photos. I really had some fab mm -hmm. wonderful people who used to take photos at the Harp mm -hmm. Congress before we had these easy digital things, <laughs> you know, because either if you don't hire a professional photographer or, art, you know, getting mm -hmm. a picture says a thousand words. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think for period from editing, I don't have a lot of pictures of me because I was going around going, like, trying to get <laughs> I would like to know because you did not finish this kind of editing, editing and be, be publisher. You also do something for the American Association. Is that right? uh, yeah, well, um, so, so been involved and part of it, I have to say, really goes all the way back to and, and, and my parents, my mother in particular was always quite mm -hmm. active you know, um, while she was teaching, but in organizations, mm -hmm. trying to make things mm -hmm. happen. Since I think both both my parents, mm -hmm. it was always about trying to share, you know, or make things more possible, whatever they were, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I had that example. And then uh, Penny was very active in the American Harp Society and the American Harp um, Society Foundation now, you know, and had gone to the World Harp Congresses. So she really is quite connected. I mean, Sally Maxwell, was the president, the one who founded the foundation now. So I had these examples of people. And so for me, it was like, oh, this is how you meet people. This is what you do, mm -hmm. okay, you know, you know, that there was that. And then, so I'd been um, asked to be on the board. And then the second, they have certain time limits and things. So at the end of my second time, well, fourth time, I guess, because there's, you can serve two terms and then you have mm -hmm. to rotate off. And so the second time I rejoined the board, the last few years, you know, because um, the, the officer terms for the American Harp Society every two years. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think I had three years left in my board term. And so, you know, they like to try to have it so you have more consistency because I can tell you, you spend like editing. It it takes a while before, like, I think it was many years before I finally with the editorship going, I think, okay, I think I, I think I know now what I'm supposed to do, <laughs> you know? But so the presidency was just a two year term um, and it, 2014 to 2016, it was, um, I mean, and when you see what, I, I think it's easier to sort of like just show up and kind of say, oh, okay, all that was great, all that was different. But when you see what it takes, you're kind of like, okay, even if you don't agree or um, mm -hmm. you can you can really appreciate the dedication that people have and just have to try to remember that everyone, everyone believes they are well-intentioned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> May not be received that way, but everyone really does come mm -hmm. from a place of that usually. So we had been in a transition and it was, um, uh, you know, uh, also, I think as the world has gotten busier, it's like trying to professionalize a lot of this organization. As you can imagine, you know, you're, I mean, you know, where most of us are have a full time professional life, but then this is mm -hmm. actually, you know, this really the more and more the things that are. So they, were, they had started to professionalize the organization of it, you know, by hiring a firm mm -hmm. and then they were moving to trying to get it so you could have someone who could really focus on that versus like, hey, I just finished my four jobs and now I get to do this, you know? So it was a transitional period that way. It was it was good in some ways because um, again, learned a lot um, and hopefully, you know, kind of helped move the organization forward. Um, they hired their first full-time employee, which is now their wonderful executive director who does happen to be a harpist as well, but really just a very 
capable and experienced person. I think actually Catherine Advanis, um, who went to Oberlin, but she was actually, she started just on a side note, but just to say, you never know what where life takes you. She had been a harpist, I think for the Florida Symphony Orchestra, I may have the name wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as there are labor relations, transitions and so she became executive director during a period but that's the same period that or at least in the states there's a famous um uh, super bowl football <laughs> um broadcast where Whitney houston sang the national anthem but that's actually the one where the orchestra played and she was the executive director at that time and then of course mm -hmm. she kind of went into her um non-profit organizational skills for a while but returned back in some ways right at kind of a time when the Harp Society, this, you know, this was great. And so they've been under her stewardship um, since 2000, for, well, 2000, I don't remember. Oh, okay, yeah, 2015, because that's, yeah, we were doing the search mm -hmm. my first mm -hmm. year's presidency. On a side note to that, I mean, I think, you know, it was actually a good, both a really challenging time aside from the organization, but personally for me, because at that time my father had gotten ill. I know some people know this, so this is not like a, <laughs> but you know, with, with a terminal illness. And so some ways, um, you know, for, and then he passed away during the presidency. Like, so he, he was diagnosed in December of 2014 and then passed away in February of 2016. And I just remember, you know, one besides doing meetings from the hospital, you know, kind of while he's waiting for surgeries, you know, while we're doing this, in some ways it was a kind of a, when you can't do anything about a situation, you know, I mean, you really, you're helpless. You really can't do anything, you know, at least, you know, you have something that you can try to do something about. So, so that was, you know, kind of very, a, bittersweet kind of thing because I think he would have appreciated really sort of he was really kind of followed the harp world <laughs> once once his daughter got into it so mm -hmm. but you know so that was kind of the backstory for that so that's mm -hmm. why I think um, there's a photo somewhere there where you have the Atlanta conferences which where I finished my presidency but also like mm -hmm. had to play for the tribute thing I think I just finally just like all right I'm crying in public for the first time <laughs> Mostly because it was just kind of, you know, kind of focusing lots of things. Yeah. You can absolutely imagine. <laughs> oh, my God. And now at these days, you are also the member of the board of directors of the World Health Congress, right? Yeah. As, a, as an official voting member now, you know, all the years as an editor, and I think Isabel Moore told me to say, you know, I, I, I could go attend the meetings and I didn't attend them all in person, but I would definitely mm -hmm. come. And so in some ways, because you're their ex officio just by the office of being editor, mm -hmm. but you don't vote, <laughs> I could, I could say things and, you know, <laughs> it's like, well, this is what it is from this perspective. Um, so you could, and also because you were <laughs> the person in touch with, oh, you know, a, a, the number of correspondents who volunteer, you know, mm -hmm. there's I have 60 now, maybe 50, 60. So, mm -hmm. you know, there would be, you you would hear things from different perspectives, but it was always mm -hmm. interesting to hear. So now though, um, I think we just joined them for, it's a three year term, but now they've extended one year because we postponed mm -hmm. the next mm -hmm. Congress to 2021. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. so it's, 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 you know, yeah, it's nice to see, see many familiar faces again. And, you know, That's of, lovely. And you have now meeting recently, you will go to for the meeting, right? Uh, well, we'll, yes, we will go from our laptops into the Zoom universe. <laughs> in july yeah they will still have um yeah. they have annual most of these boards have annual meetings at least an annual meeting and so mm -hmm. for more heart congress they'll have it in july via zoom mm -hmm. so which will, of course mm -hmm. i i mean luckily kathy kinzel is the chair in my time zone right now <laughs> so my my meeting times are, are are during the day but you know for some of them joining mm -hmm. from you know, certainly from europe and from you know mm -hmm. east asia it's it's, mm -hmm. it's something and they're there in the middle of the night it's really kind of incredible you know it's so. really incredible yeah but thank god that we have this technology that you can do this you know because mm -hmm. usually of course these meetings makes you happy to to meet also different places that you can visit different places so now you will meet different places on the zoom yeah yeah, I mean, I would love to do face to face, but you know, in some mm -hmm. ways, it's kind of like, oh, why didn't we do this before more? <laughs> I mean, yeah. for, you know, if we, but of course we are because we have to. But you know, it's like, oh, you know, so it it, it is really, really a very wonderful thing that we actually do have this now, yeah. so we can keep yeah. in touch better. You know, uh, we have a nice message. Look at oh, who is <laughs> no, Shannon, <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> I, you know, it's taking me years because. 
to call her Shannon now because we knew her as Shen Sheshua. <laughs> I have some pictures, Shannon, so <laughs> I don't know if you'll appreciate them, but <laughs> <laughs> go through them. I have your first picture when you probably started the harp. Uh, this is yeah. your first harp, right? <laughs> Clearly, because I do not have my thumbs out. This is probably we just got the harp <laughs> oh. in our house. I'm like, let's take a picture. Yes, this is a troubadour. That's my very first harp. Is a troubadour. Uh, I don't re remember which model. I think it's it's um, it had the extra strings. They started to add on. So, and you can mm -hmm. see, I forgot. Yes, very nineteen early nineteen eighties. Okay, and what model was it actually? Who who was the maker? A lion and Healy. So the troubadour yeah. is actually the name of the model, just like uh -huh. twenty three. So it's a lion and Healy troubadour. It's a lever lever harp. Yeah. So. And do you still have it? Uh, my mother has it now. <laughs> so it's it, occasionally she'll 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 want me to show her again, but she we still have it. Um, my family has does does <laughs> tends to save things because you never know when you might need it. <laughs> <laughs> for your children really. well i know unless you're moving which was a quite a <laughs> she's yeah, just moved from she's no longer in california but she's finally moved to nevada but that was that was a multi-year process and i do remember when we finally moved it and i was about to move my father's things back drive it across the country and she was going to keep the harp and then at the last minute she's like oh well maybe you should keep it i'm like i just loaded this whole car and i'm going to drive across the desert i was like i'm not taking it now <laughs> I, sh I should have that but <laughs> yeah. That's the one thing you always, the harp has always got, it's, it's, it's like yeah. a baby. And you were about eight years old here. Probably yeah, about eight and a half or so, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not very bad at keeping track of numbers. <laughs> but it was only for the, for the picture because you sit on the other side, right? Clearly, yes. And I've got my whatever I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing with my thumbs there. Only you know, not harp is done. Well, I, I that's the thing is like, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah. This is your teacher. This is Penny. Yes. Um. This is this. I believe because the good thing about this, Jana, is you made me go like, I really need to organize some of these things. <laughs> um. Mm -hmm. This was in L.A. Um. Somewhere maybe near the Coburn. It was one of the American Harp Society national mm -hmm. events, and it was great to see her because um. You know she's moved she's moved out to the central coast of california mm -hmm. so i don't get to see her so much you know because it depends on one travel mm -hmm. thing so mm -hmm. yeah that's penny. Oh, how sweet how really sweet and here you are this is you believe me it's really Anne. and honestly <laughs> you have changed so much you know it has happened i remember you like that also, also from the start uh, <laughs> <laughs> i when i was going through these pictures i was thinking gosh you know my my students and former students and I'm yeah, <laughs> one because we've got slumped shoulders, we <laughs> we've got the harp cart very dangerously near the harp. I have these, any of my students are like, what is going? Because we have very draconian harp care policies here. But this um, don't work in fall harp. Actually, you know what? This is from the ASTA competition um, at Indiana before I went there. So this is somewhere in the musical arts center, and that probably looks like gold harp number one <laughs> um mm -hmm. i was practicing there in my mock trial very 1980s t-shirt <laughs> and of course the perm <laughs> and i have to say this if my mother ever watches this interview this is probably the only photo from that trip where i'm smiling <laughs> My poor mother. She was trying to be take so many photos, and there's so many of them just me scowling at the camera. <laughs> but this is really a beautiful photo. On a beautiful photo. <laughs> Here's also another picture from the studies. Yes, this is before college. This is with um, Miss McDonald in Hidden Valley, and this was the second class I had gone to, and they it was a beautiful little retreat actually. It was um, in Carmel Valley, and there was a this residence, and so we mm -hmm. had this end of the concert, and you know uh, people were there. I don't remember. I should have. I think the photo like Gillian Bennett Sella was there. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of you know kind of just people, and I was like, oh, I know you. So this was after, after. Um, this so I think I played it impromptu for a impromptu mm -hmm. it was for that recital, then had to play it for the next 10 years, but that's how that piece goes. <laughs> oh lovely. And here's also another from, from the studies or 
Um, you know, this is actually from the 1990 um, American Heart Society competition. And this is actually mm -hmm. Patricia Adams Harris, who's the daughter of Dr. Burden Adams and Ann Adams. And she was handing out uh, the certificates at the winner's recital. You know, we had to play. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of funny things about this picture. One is the dress is because, like I said, I really my my mother and I made that dress because I didn't have any concert clothes, you know, in high school because we really didn't do concerts. So we made it. I just want to take a pin and pop those sleeves. <laughs> and there's also um, there's also like a I don't know if you could tell there's a we had I thought it was really cool. You could make a matching hair bow and I had it in my hair on this side of my head. And I remember getting my judging comment sheets back. And like when the judges and this was actually good advice when you think about it, because I did move a lot as you and I got called. She's like, don't wear the hair bow. It's distracting. <laughs> it was, I was like, okay, note to self. Um, yeah, also I have to, I don't, uh, uh, we actually went, that one is recital, note to yourself too when you're young. We had all finished the competition because, and we went to the IMAX movie theater at like 1 a.m. I don't know, the night, well, the morning of, let's say we got back from the IMAX movie theater at about sometime in the middle of the morning and we had to play the winner's concert the next day. <laughs> and I think I chose the safe piece because I think I do remember Park Stigney telling me like, oh, you should have played the Parish Alvars, the introduction cadence in Rondo, which was like, no, I can't because in the competition I missed a D flat in the B flat major pedal. And you know, when you make those kind of mistakes, especially when you didn't really know your music theory that well, it just seems like forever. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do it. It's like, I don't, I don't think I can play the harp. It probably was like for a second and a half. <laughs> anyway. That's lovely. Before we'll go on with the pictures, we have also a message from Isabel. It's lovely. Oh, She's with hello, us. Isabel. hello, Isabel. Such a wonderful interview you had with her and also so many fun times of her at Indiana. I think, you know, really quite special person. It's, it's so lovely, really. It was great to meet her as well online. Mm -hmm. Here we have the picture which I showed already quite often, but yeah. <laughs> my pictures, the people on the picture, I think that it will be seen still quite often. So yeah. you are there in the first row as the third one in the middle, actually, the third yeah, one. Yeah, in front of you and Liz Hainan, and then mm -hmm. Sheeran is over on the left. Uh, well, I guess the left of the screen in the white shirt, fourth of the mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so many people there at that time. John Quox and Eleanor Fell. Big right. daughter and a mother, and Basan, and I think, I think there's some people. I don't. Was Sarah O'Brien there when you were at, at IU? No, or, no, no, I think no, we, no. she might have came the next year. But it was just incredible the number of people that would come. Maybe just sometimes for a month or a few weeks. You know, just absolutely, absolutely. No, it's really amazing bunch of people. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here you are also. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, there's Kirsten Agresta Copley and Liz Haney. This was at an American Harp Society event, mm -hmm. so um, still have the curly hair. <laughs> uh, but it was for a publisher. Also, Kirsten also. Kirsten also has yes. changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kirsten was all, oh, well, she's still, still always. I have, well, I don't know. I remember she would be, we had conducting class in graduate school, and I, no matter what, it was an 8 a.m., and no matter what, she always was just always so well put together. And then the thing is, I would talk about this later with my students in my pedagogy class. I'm like, hey, you know, presentation prevent. <laughs> so when they finally met her, the first thing out of their mouth on the street is like, you're the one with the hair. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and, I just, and she was like, what are you saying? <laughs> I'm like, so careful what we teach your students. So, but yeah, so, but yeah, was, I mean, and you know, it was, it was quite incredible, you know, kind of sh to show up there. Cause like I said, I started right after the first USA competition had been, you know, started, you know, that mm -hmm. time. Amazing. So. Here's also a photo which I have showed quite often. Yeah. Because yeah. You know, also all of them, uh, all of us is there. You are right on the right side, the first lady in the black mm -hmm. staying next to Mrs. Herlock. Yes. Yeah. I think of this picture, you know, there's two things about one is, um, I don't know if it's mentioned yet, but Nicanor Zavaleta is there right behind the harp. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And I remember because I, I don't remember he played, I, or maybe you, he might have been practicing because it, there were quite intensive schedules. But um, that was actually the second time I heard him play, you know, because I grew up listening to his recordings. Because once I started those famous Deutsche Gramophone 
mm. recordings. He was who I heard on the harp. This is the introduction, you know, I don't, was it a million he had sold by that, which is, you know. Mm. Um, and then he even came through Fresno at one point to play over a local orchestra, which, and I'm sure, I don't remember, it probably was the Handel Harp Concerto and Debussy Dances, which if I think about it now, is more incredible because my memory was, was he was on stage in the middle and he was just having such a good time, kind of just looking around the hall, but, you know, like, it's up here again, you know, and I thought, oh, he's so relaxed. And you know, the local reviewer did not appreciate that. So he just seems like he's like, but I know he was just so like, oh, and then we played a reception for him afterwards, which Penny had a, you know, they, the meeting, she'd had some of her students play, but so, but what an incredible thing at that contest, because he came and played, you know, some of the pieces he'd recorded, I mean, his hands were shaking a little bit, but still you could just hear the, you know, the quality. And I think he passed away the next, the next year in 93. So, you know, special time there. Yeah. Absolutely. Also that, I don't know. And I don't know if you remember that about the contest, but they used to have it in Jerusalem at that hotel. And I, all I can, I can remember is that they would, it'd be, you'd have these amazing breakfast buffets. I don't, but then you have no lunch and a very late full dinner. So I think for me, that picture reminds me of like cheese blimpses. They were really good. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's eat a lot. Because <laughs> we're going to eat like 10, 12 hours later. <laughs> but we, in this Mori Moriah hotel, it was also the first stage. I remember that it mm -hmm. was in the hotel, right? Mm -hmm. of the competition. So it's it's a great memory on that. Absolutely. And you can yeah. see also the days that it was really in February instead of in the autumn. So it was, yeah. Amazing. And, oh, I have another harp story, but it wasn't my harp there. I think that's the contest because I did it twice where I broke a bass wire and, you know, the judges are in front. So they gave me the string to replace it. Um, I think the, and I start, oh yeah, Prelude and Toccata by Handel. Was that the, I think that was the year. Yeah, you did. It. So I played the first piece, it broke, and then they gave me the wire string to break, uh, to replace. And I was replacing it and I was like, oh, this sounds kind of funny. I kept trying, cause, and then finally Peter Wiley, the harp technician is like, oh wait, let me see. It's, it's the wrong octave, <laughs> so I probably could. So it was like, I think I'd broken the fifth octave wire and it was the sixth octave wire I was trying to put on at first. Oh, and I was no. like, so I just remember kind of going, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I wish it broken in the first piece. So actually, cause then I could have played it again. <laughs> You know, because they had me start the second piece. It's like, I oh, should have broken in the first piece. <laughs> I do that over. <laughs> oh, funny. Here is also a picture. Uh, of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon, there we are. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the infamous IU harp parties at Miss McDonald's, her, her previous house before the one that had the fire. And at this time, this was, <laughs> yes. Um, Shannon was there as a master student and said Celia Chan Valeria would come from from Southern California as well. And uh, we would, you know, have skits, get guess a game where we'd be dressed up. And this one, I think Celia was probably playing a California surfer or something. And then uh, Shuan has obviously got the harp jewelry there with tuning pins and pedal, pedal springs and things. And I was wearing a harp cover. <laughs> So, it's but we would so do these different things. Yeah. But this picture is amazing. You yeah. are in the middle. <laughs> and this is a couple years later, still at the harp class party. This time I got to be the rocker with the, or something, you know, a <laughs> pedal felt on the head and various drumsticks. And I, I have to admit, I actually had that vinyl stuff from a Halloween costume party from many years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> And here's, uh, tell us, this is... Ah, uh, you know, this is one of the summer harp classes of Miss McDonald in, um, mm -hmm. at IU, and you know, she used to do them. And I think you can see an incredible array. I think this picture for me was kind of special. One was the summer harp classes, you know, kind of the, you know, that's how I think we've met and, you know, I've tried to start one here at Illinois, but you can see in this picture, like, I think Naoko Yoshino is like third from the right, you know, mm -hmm. she's, mm -hmm. uh, you've got, you know, many people, you could go with, with a student at I, Marcelo Panino, he's in another picture. You've got Gwyneth Wenting, you know, um, from the Holland, from Israel winner was there. Um, mm -hmm. It, 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 Ramiro Enriquez is um, just over in a gray shirt from Argentina. Mm -hmm. Is it in the middle? Actually, uh, is uh, kind of uh, very sad. Is uh, one of my former students who had started with Linda Rolo and mm -hmm. Louisville, Lisa Spurlock Gilmore, and she passed away far too early um, a couple years ago. But she mm -hmm. was. That's where I first met her at the summer harp class. You know, when she's quite mm -hmm. young, and then she built a really 
thriving piano and harp studio in Louisville, Kentucky. And in fact, one of her students, mm -hmm. I think Chelsea Balmer now is, uh, went to IU and then is now studying with Annalene Lenartz, you know, um, mm -hmm. and others. But so, but it was kind of this, you know, uh, at these summer harp classes, you would meet people from all over just for that week that um, mm -hmm. it would happen, you know, and then Kyojin Lee is their second um, to the left of Suzanne McDonald. Um, mm -hmm. And Angelica Viana was also at IU studying at time from Brazil, you know, so. <laughs> That's wonderful. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. We get only the comments from <laughs> Sean. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I have to credit Sh um, both Shannon and Liz Hainan, you know, for some of the contemporary music I got into because mm -hmm. they they went to IU and they loved working with composers. And so that was just mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. Well, I don't know if they loved it, but I mean, they were doing a lot of it, you know, both in a music ensemble and things. And so I think one of the pieces Shannon uh, decided to pass on was, I think, one of the first ones I did by a... a uh, a woman who's now directing film and composing pianists, uh, Heather Schmidt, out in uh, Southern mm -hmm. California now, but she was one mm -hmm. of the young prodigy composers there too. So mm -hmm. it's lovely. Here's you as a soloist uh, in orchestra. You know, this is from the first World Harp Congress that I ever went to, which is the one in Tacoma, Seattle, uh -huh. Washington, and this was a focus on youth concert, and they. Um, I think it's the one time, the only time we've done it so far. They actually had four of us, including Celia, who was in the harp party. Um, four of us got to play a concerto with the orchestra. Um, and so I think Celia got to play Davy C. Dances, uh, they had Dittersdorf, a um, young lady from Ireland, and then from Korea. There's two of us that had to change our concertos because originally I was going to play the accepted to play the Castanuevo Tedesco Concertino, mm -hmm. which was exciting. Mm -hmm. But then Kirsten, uh, Gressa Copley, uh, was, uh, was going to play that on one of the regular concerts. So they asked me to change to the uh, Joaquin Rodrigo, the Concierto de Aranjuez, which of course I'll be, okay, I'm delighted to play that, you know, and it was kind of neat because um, my, it was another piece my father really loved, but also mm -hmm. um, it, it gave me a chance, I, I you know, I to get in touch with the daughter of um, Rodrigo, Cecilia Rodrigo, who was very, you know, I, I, I'm always still kind of surprised, but, you know, she was very communicative and, you know, talked mm -hmm. about, okay, this, this version is fine that Zabaleta did, but not the Serenata that had been published, which I don't think we can get anymore, you know, that he, mm -hmm. his revision of that, but that, that made me curious about the Serenata, of course, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. that's the original harp concerto and all the different versions from the original, all the way the ones they've recorded. So yeah. another, and homemade <laughs> dress, a little shiny. We'll still got the puppy sleeves and the curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is in Spain. Um, uh, the Arpista Ludovico competition, mm -hmm. I think from 96. Mm -hmm. And this is on the streets of El Escorial, uh, the beautiful mountain village. And you could see there, um, uh, IU classmates Cleona Doris from Ireland, uh, and then mm -hmm. Heaven Fan, and, and then Xuxing Chen from Taiwan. And then there's Joe Garnier, you know, mm -hmm. founder of Chemic, um, because mm -hmm. at that point, uh, I think there'd been, you know, some, some be before, right before it comes, so Chemic brought harps for this competition, you know, and I think that mm -hmm. probably is one of the first times I've gotten to actually play on it more, because mm -hmm. the only time you'd get to see it would be like at one of these gatherings mm -hmm. when there'd be exhibitions, so they're quite nice, and it's very, quite gentlemanly, so that's, that's very true. creative, that's yeah. True. And this competition doesn't exist anymore, actually, right? Um, I don't think they've held it for a while. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's interesting, these connections. Uh, the woman who organized it, Maria Rosa Cavo Manzano, mm -hmm. um, her former student, uh, Beatrice Martin Ruiz, was preceded me here at Illinois for a couple of years, and she had been a student of Alice Spiro King, um, mm -hmm. who also taught at Illinois and had invited Maria Rosa Cava Mozano here for a mm -hmm. bit. So it's kind of, and then Alice had also um, cultivated a lot, some of the really great things we have here from Rosalind Wrench. So it's kind of an mm -hmm. interesting connection through the years. But mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard. I do remember that competition though, because uh, you know we're in this beautiful, I think where this. Uh, well, I, I'm not going to get the European history right, so I'm not going to go there, but um, uh, they had only, the way we got to try the harps out was there as a stone church, and so we had all these harps in a stone, small stone church, <laughs> everyone is trying it, as you can imagine, the reparation, so the only time I think you could get um, quiet time to practice before the meal service started is you could wait in the morning to sign up for like half an hour um, for the second stage if you passed, uh, for like 30 minutes or 15 minutes. And so, of course, the IU kids would 
stay there at 7 a.m. waiting there. And of course, the husband of the first prize winner, Risako, <laughs> he was there because she had to rest. As she partnered with, <laughs> he was signed her name for practice. But um, yeah, that was an interesting competition because um, some people brought, I think they didn't expect as many people. And um, mm -hmm. I don't remember. It was a great number that showed up for the first first stage. And so speaking about interesting composition, competition experiences, I think we had uh, 15 minutes on one harp and then you moved to another harp for 15 minutes. And then you went to the stage and if you didn't have your harp, you played that harp. <laughs> and you still got judged for tuning, apparently, by the points. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> it makes a good story now. <laughs> it's a great experience, honestly. It's really, yeah, the people now, they have all the experience. Right. And, right. And they don't know this kind of experience. Yeah. <laughs> but I also remember there was always required one special piece. Mm. During the show. Mm -hmm. It was also very interesting that it has been always like that piece. And it was nothing nothing difficult oh yeah you know but it's such an interest you know and that was an interesting piece that case people know i think it was a fantasia in the ma manner of Ludo, uh, ludovico by alonso mm -hmm. de madara mm -hmm. and there's lots of different versions but you know um ludovico you know it, i mean this is a neat thing about music it's always a window into you know it, it, it can, it, if you're curious, it can really sort of, if you want to explore, you can learn so much mm -hmm. about, or, or ask yourself what more you don't learn. So, you know, harpist back then was quite a virtuoso of the harp, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to get the century right, but from quite many years ago. And so he would get the bending of the chromatics by, of course, they would get chromatics by bending the string, you know, and so it's a very chromatic piece. It's mm -hmm. incredibly chromatic if you try to play it on the pedal harp. Mm -hmm. So and lots of cross relation, of course, the mm -hmm. harp harmony, you know, um, it's not, you know, it's not the system that we have from like, you know, Bach of, oh, mm -hmm. dominant tonics, the dominant, and it's like, oh, yeah, we can go to a completely different key, no problem. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's a, it was, yeah, that's right, you're, that's right, very, yeah, an elephant's memory, <laughs> but yeah, that, there was that one piece that was always on the competition. <laughs> True, and this is from that competition. No, this is from. Oh, you know, this was um, in 1998. It was the American Harp Society National Conference in Baton Rouge, and um, mm -hmm. they had asked Anne Benjamin, who was organizing the conference, um, also wonderful someone that I've looked up to all three years. You know, uh, she had also studied at IU. Mm -hmm. um, she organized it, and they were doing a, a conference theme on the connection between, like just the French, France and the US, especially in that area. And so she had asked me to play the Renier concerto, which was really such a great honor. And that's yeah. what I learned that concerto for. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it, I, and then in, so that, and I think in some ways, you know, the, the concerto was not, not because of his performance, but you know, because the concerto had been so popular and then not so popular. Also, that was mm -hmm. her beautiful, um, really a 23 from, I think it was early 20th century, still had the ivory pegs. And it was such an amazing instrument that actually mm -hmm. on that same concert, which had Isabel Perrin as a solist, and then Kyojin Lee, who, um, you know, there was a cancellation. So she had to sub in and she was a soloist for the Boadu concerto. She played it. Mm -hmm. So we both played that harp. Like mm -hmm. she played right before me, but this was such an amazing harp, um, mm -hmm. you know, that we're like, oh, we'll, we'll both play it. So <laughs> she played it. They took it I think it was Peter Wiley too, took it off stage really quickly, checked the mm -hmm. tuning, put it back on. And then actually that's also the same harp that Isabel Moretti, who was the opening concert artist, she also played on this instrument. I mean, it was just really one of those instruments when you play, it's just mm -hmm. so easy mm -hmm. to play. And you're like, wow, okay. <laughs> so it's, like, it's worth it. I'll just, I can sit down. <laughs> so. Super nice. Here's with uh, Ami Mariani. Ah, and yes. Oh, we're finally out of school and no more perms. <laughs> we have the economy haircut. Um, this was at the Prague conference, Rihanna. This was when you invited our quartet. Um, and we played, uh, we were programmed on the last day of mm -hmm. the full day of your, your Congress in Prague in 1999. And we had the Pacific mm -hmm. Harp Quartet with, um, starting on the left, Kyojin Lee uh, from Korea, South Korea, you know, um, who mm -hmm. won third prize both in Israel and USA, um, I think in 1994. Eight. And then Heaven Fan mm -hmm. and Ami Mayani, composer, and then Xu Xing Chen from Taiwan. And mm -hmm. so we played it there. And we uh, we did record his uh, we did record his arabesque number no. three for harp quartet, which is mm -hmm. you know he has this whole arabesque series, and it's quite you know a lot of the material. If you like his solo piece, the Makama, you know, uh -huh. or, 
Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really like that. And we when we when we actually recorded speaking about Mayani in USA, the only time we could record that was the day after the finals of the USA competition. So I don't know how Kyojin did it because it was like the next after and that was a really quite an, an emotional finals in so many ways. But um she was there in the next morning recording somehow. <laughs> A really difficult piece. It's not easy because <laughs> that was the only time all four of us were actually going to mm -hmm. be able to do it. And he, you know, wanted this recording. So but. that's fantastic. Oh my, this is fantastic. And um, <laughs> so this is at the end of the day of uh, the Prague Congress. So we had played on that Saturday morning, and I think we were the first concert, which wasn't so early, except we were also sharing a concert with Kara McLaughlin's group from the um, University of Arizona, Harp Fusion. So I think, you know, any harp ensemble concert, you have to get up early and tune the harp. So I think we had been up, I don't know, before eight. Or, well, I mean, that doesn't, nowadays, that's what is that? But we were up really early. And then Naoko had asked me and Kyojin to turn pages for her and Marie Pierre Langham. And, I, um, and so we were turning pages for their brilliant harp duet concert in front of the whole Congress on Saturday night. And I just remember that we were so exhausted, but so like, oh, we can't mess this up. And so I think <laughs> I think what I got told is that I was trying to be really absolutely like a statue turning Naoko's pages, you know, and like Kyojin is, Kyojin always is so natural, it's very relaxed and suddenly across the stage, I see Mira Pauli going, mm -hmm. <laughs> this because it's the Damas sonatine, which you know, there's many pages. And I think mm -hmm. either there was a repeat or two got turned into the page. Of course, you know, no problem because they played it sometimes. It's yeah. No, but I just remember it. <laughs> so that's what that photo is from. <laughs> Uh, you. And yeah. then this is Kyojin and I. I think this is my first year at Illinois. We were we we got to play um, harp duet, and then we had oh a uh, really just miss him. On my left is uh, Angel Padilla mm -hmm. Crespo from Mexico, who passed away really unexpectedly, you know, just a few mm -hmm. years ago. Um, and he played with us at the Lion and Healy opening concert. I and mean, such mm -hmm. a special musician in person. And then uh, Marcelo Panito from Brazil. And so we had asked them to turn our pages. And I think the piece mm -hmm. that was there was uh, Bernard Andres Parvis, which I, the score, you know, it's that the score we had was quite, you know, like beautifully handwritten, but, you know, in, in the handwriting. And so I remember Angel just being like, kind yeah. of like, kind of going, oh, okay. Cause you know, multimeters and turning back and forth. So, but that's, you know, great. But I, I for there's a time period when Kyojin, you know, it was really, a, a really, you know, when you have a time to perform with someone that you, it's just so easy to play together mm -hmm. with, you know, and mm -hmm. then you can see all the things that they really do that, you know, they do so much better than you. <laughs> It's so. great when you have a co like cooperation with someone with whom you just breathe the same, you know, you don't need to yeah. talk and it just go through. And I'm so really sorry for Angel because this is a big loss for It really is. Work. Such as yeah. yeah. So it's always just such mm. a wonderful uh, perspective and just, you know, mm. uh, so... But and so he looked on the picture so happy. Yes, no. yes. He was, no. you know, because he had been, I believe, I, I could get this wrong, but I think he, he went and studied with Marcel, Marcel Robles and then mm -hmm. also, you know, and then had had to, attended a summer course with Nick Canores out of Atlanta. There's that wonderful quote about mm -hmm. him as a musician, as a person. And then he came mm -hmm. to IU after I'd been there, I mean, visiting. So he was there at the time I just started to, you know, teach here at Illinois. And he was mm -hmm. there at that time, you know, uh, deciding to come back, even though, of course, he was concertizing before that point, you know, so just a really... Not a loss, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Here we uh, are. <laughs> this is something spectacular. You were playing some... No. <laughs> you know, for a while, and I, I do it, I think, I, I, I mean, this is from an electroacoustic music festival. I believe mm -hmm. it's in Florida. It's kind of one of the pieces I was playing, but it was one mm -hmm. where, you know, um, one, it's like it was easier to play on one side of the harp, you know, and that sort of thing. So it's just kind of a picture of some of the things have done. <laughs> Not every day, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. And here's you with also... Oh. Some, 
Kayla and with Miss McDonald. <laughs> yes, you know, this was uh, an American Harp Society, uh, oh, there's the date, 2003, uh, Summer Institute. You know, was, I, I think it was a very, it was in Utah and it was quite special because they had invited um, uh, all three of us and uh, to, mm -hmm. to give mas the master classes, you know, there. And so for me, it was just special to share the stage with these two amazing, distinguished, you know, uh, people in our field, you know, to be invited to do that. So that's great. That's really great. Mm -hmm. We have not changed at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just glad the perm is gone. <laughs> uh, so this is a <laughs> economy hairstyle. Um, this is another American Harp Society event. This was in 2007, and they had um, wanted to recognize um, just some of the amazing people that have um, come from the Chicago area. And so... Mm -hmm. You know, Miss McDonald was introducing Victor Salvi there in the front row, mm -hmm. um, and then I I was introducing uh, Dr. Rosalind Wrench, which um, whom I don't know many people know. She's the author of Oh yes, I've got my book. For many years, this was the at least for us, you know, after Hans Joachim Singel, she's done the Harps and Harpet Off and Show with Harpets and Harpets yeah. Harp Harp book, um, you know, and she had actually taught here in Illinois many years ago, mm -hmm. and then. Alice Spiro Keen had, when she was the harp faculty here, she, her and Rosalind, they had a, mm -hmm. you know, cultivate. So she donated this really neat collection of um, her papers and collections here, which if anyone's interested, there's our mm -hmm. archives, mm -hmm. we can see it. And mm -hmm. so I met her for the first time in person, really, although I had her book at the Prague Congress, actually, you know, because she, she was there, mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. that was a time when they were starting to, um, her and Victor Salvi, you know, both had lived in the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. And so when he'd started Salvi Harps, she'd been there. And then he was, I think, his museum collection. They were working on a catalog. And then on the far right, we had Liz Schifani standing in the back. Uh, that's the former principal harpist of the Lyric Opera and harp mm -hmm. faculty at Northwestern University. And she was introducing Edward Zinsky, who was a principal harpist for many, many years with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. So I just, it was a kind of a really neat moment and also to kind of just kind of remember you know you know the people that um you know through the years have what their careers and their perspectives have given so much back in so many ways so that's lovely it's really great to to have the opportunity to be surrounded by those people it's Mm -hmm. Or just to get to meet and talk to them. You know. mm -hmm. Ah, this is in Hong Kong with Dan Yu. We were doing a pre-festival kind of uh, publicity festival for the 2008, I believe, Asian Harp Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we were playing, I think, in a nightclub somewhere. <laughs> <It's just laughs> <great fun. laughs> a duet, but so yeah. And here's in, oh, in USA in Indiana. Yes, this is the first time I um, was on a jury, you know, and mm -hmm. um, so you can see like on my left, oh, Ayako Shinozaki, who was on a jury at the Israel contest, uh, you mm -hmm. know, back in 92. Um, and then I, Jean-Marie Pantin, the, he was a pianist, and Ernest Stupp from Holland, Patricia Wooster, who was uh, the jury president, Patricia mm -hmm. Tazzini, uh, mm -hmm. you know, from Italy, and Daphne Bowden, who was just on your interview series on two days ago. So... <laughs> It was, yeah, it was quite, I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> you know, really, it was really quite, quite, I was like, really, I mean, I'd worked with, you know, I'd known some of the, certainly through the World Harp Congress and, you know, quite great. I do remember Ernestine and Daphne were quite amused because in Indiana, no matter, no matter how, how mature and experienced you are, they have to ask you for your identification if you decide mm -hmm. to order an environment. So they were quite amused because they're like, yes, we are definitely over 21, but <laughs> here's our, here's our identifications anyway. So. That's super. And you know, the harp was amazing. It's a, it's a gold, uh, it's gold, but it's a red one, right? Yeah, I think some special veneer. Yeah, just really, I think they, mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah, it's 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 quite a special instrument, and then Agnès Clément won was the first prize winner there. So who, who was the first prize? Agnès Clément from Agnes. France. Yes, yeah. Yes. So. And here it's also uh, the I next time. Yes, the next competition, Drew. With um, we're missing the the uh, the juror member Imam Namov, who was uh, not harpist, but yeah, this was the jury. So we've got Gillian Benesella. <laughs> Many years later from Hidden Valley, she was on it. Dan Yu and uh, 
um, and then Baltasar Juarez from Mexico, and then Maria Luisa Ryan, and Yoko Inoue from Japan. I actually was not supposed to be on this jury. I was, um, uh, Sarah Bullen was going to be there, but then the situation came, so she ha was not able to serve as jury president. So that's how I ended up uh, serving right after one after another, you know, because I think I, early on, maybe they had some of the same jury members for a while, and then they were changing each time. So, mm -hmm. but it was it was great to see sort of, a, I thought it was an interesting, real sort of, um, you know, different juries, quite different. <laughs> Absolutely, but it's really nice. And we have nice comments also from Marisa Robles, who is with us today as well. Thank you very much, Marisa. Oh. <laughs> I'm so honored she's listening. You know, I speaking about being, you know, her recordings of the Mozart flute and harp concerto with Sir James Galway were like what I would see on the television. And I think, um, you know, and also Alex Murray was my former colleague in flute here would talk about Jimmy. <laughs> so I'm honored she's listening. And, you know, I think, um, like I said, she's a teacher of Angel as well, which, you know. Mm. So she, she has been always an inspiration for mm -hmm. all our generations. So. Mm -hmm. It's really true. And here we are talking about your duo. So ah. exactly what you are. With yes, your the Aletheia duo. You, your pronouncing was great. <laughs> it's become a running joke of us when we we, we, we play. It's like, how is it going to turn out? Um, but this was for the opening concert of the Lion and Healy 150th birthday festival. So mm -hmm. um, beautiful hall, beautiful photos. So, uh, oh, yes. And here I am. Oh, wait, okay. So this is the second time I'm... <laughs> wearing the blue dress, which I think you'll still see it again. Um, it looks so gorgeous on you. It's absolutely uh, gorgeous. And this is, <laughs> your, this is your harp, the first one you were talking about? Oh, you know, actually it's not. You know, I can't remember. Well, I think, you know, no, this is one of the harps from Lion and Healy. And I don't, I, it might have been something with the venue or also because, or it might have been something with the festival, but, you know, so I didn't bring my own harp up. And <laughs> I promise, like, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll have, the harps they want played there. <laughs> so, yes, but that was yes, quite special to be included on that concert, you know, so. True, and we have also a picture together from the event. Oh, yes, that amazing final reception. I don't, I'm sure you remember they had that. Um, this was the closing reception uh, with Linda Wood Rollo. And uh, mm -hmm. oh, yes, you can see in the corner there, the, yes. the cake, the, the, cake. Harp, the harp made out of cake. <laughs> and it's like, it was just incredible. I was like looking, it's like there's something a little off with the proportions, but maybe this is a new new <laughs> new model they're introducing. <laughs> they had made a style, well, looked like a style 23 or one of their things, all oh. completely out of cake. <laughs> Absolutely. I when I came to the to the room, I said, like, why the harp is staying here? It's very weird and it smells so weird here. Like <laughs> Baker here, but I didn't really know unless I came to the harp really close by. I said, like, yeah. exactly what you said. This is something strange here. And then I mean, <laughs> thought that they are really eating from the pedals. They, they yes. eat the pedals. From, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and they had like color to string. I mean, they really like color to strings. Exactly. It's so, like it really, if you didn't look so carefully, you'd be like, oh, it's a harp. <laughs> It was really amazing, amazing. Yeah. I have posted some of the pictures so the people who are following the Harp channel, they have seen it, but it was really amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing. And we have here also another photo. And their blue dress, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. blue dress. <laughs> this is a, uh, this was the, in 2016 at the American Harp Society, they did a tribute concert to Suzanne McDonald, you know, um, mm -hmm. and they had asked us, so Monica Hargrave, who had gone to Indiana, got a degree there, she was the MC on my left, Naoko Yoshino, mm -hmm. Miss um, McDonald, Maria Casale, the first prize winner of the very first USA, and then Maria Luisa Ryan, and then Liz Hainan, you know, so uh, quite special I, there, you know, uh, quite, of course, quite, 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 pressure to play well and also speak well. <laughs> Quite no, an honor it, though. Yeah. It's a great, great group of people. Absolutely yeah. great. And we have another group of people I have shown yeah. already. <laughs> yes, that summer at the USA harp competition, you know, they, they did honor her because she was, uh, you know, just a, both a, both a birthday and also that. So mm -hmm. it was a great honor to be included. I just remember though, I don't know about you, Yana, that was very nerve wracking to play. <laughs> I think backstage there was so much tension. Even my flutist was well. Someone had moved his flute, so he was 
not happy oh about that at all. <laughs> so oh I just thought for all of us had, but we're just oh quite my. like, oh, I haven't played for these people for so long. And then all the competitors and a jury. Well, and I think it was after several stages. So it was also probably not some very happy competitor participants. <laughs> I, I like, only remember that there was very cold in the backstage. I, yeah. thought that I came to the stage and I had so cold hands. I said like, well, this is really uh, to start now the mold out with such oh. cold but you always play that so amazing. Like if I have to hear that piece, it has to be on. <laughs> Just seriously. No. <laughs> yes, no, you played so much. Well. You're also one of the uh, all together. So much more relaxed, don't we? This was the night, this was after the concert. So at the Irish Lion and we now have 2000 hair without perms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was the reunion of the IU in the yes. Yes. Oh, yes. This is at the Hong Kong World Harp Congress in 2017. And, and actually, there was a concert. There was a late night con. I mean, that's the thing, the Harp Congress, you know, if, if you've not been it, it's just all day. And then, of course, it's the time. You, and I thought this was such a nice picture because it had uh, classmates from IU or just colleagues from three different continents. You have Isabel Morton there on the mm -hmm. left, editor now of the World Harp Congress Journal, Miyako Inoue, who's um, from Japan as one of the vice presidents for World Congress, Bob Samora mm -hmm. from Mexico, and then Xu Xing Chen from Taiwan, Cleona Doris is doing so many things for the Harp Congress from yes. Ireland. So, mm -hmm. and yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always so lovely to see them. And here it's, you are giving some masterclasses at the uh, Line and Healing? Yes, this was the Chicago Harp Day just like a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2018, so in their hall. So it was just, you know, kind mm -hmm. of enjoy, you know, teaching the, one of the young participants, you know, came later to a harp class. So <laughs> do <laughs> they do still the concerts there? You know, I think they they are they're changing. They're not doing the concert series like they did for a while. But I think they've been doing these harp taculars in different places. Mm -hmm. And then I think they've been doing also hosting more sort of local events there. I'll, I'll see you know concerts mm -hmm. there, but they're not doing quite like a few a few years ago. I know they had that special mm -hmm. concert series, and then they did the summer series. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see. You know, but they mm -hmm. are using the halls. You know, beautiful space. You know, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here is some program i mean music oh, and of the you know i didn't know whether to include but then i thought you know where else is anyone going to get this so well yana you've got a scoop <laughs> well so when i started um when i was just about to start uh teaching here at illinois in 1999 in august um Sally Maxwell, who had been a student, she had studied with Henri Rene um, in, 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 in France as well. She was there at, at the same time as Suzanne McDonald. And like I mentioned, she, she was a very good friend of my first harp teacher, Penny. And so I would meet Sally over the years. And so that summer, you know, uh, Sally, and I believe Ms. McDonald, what, if not, right, but she was, went to visit Renier's goddaughter, Francois de Verenne. And so, mm -hmm. you know, Ms. McDonough, they published this living, translated this, her book, Living Harp, Harp Vivant. Um, and so um, Sally, uh, uh, they'd gotten this inscription from her goddaughter, who I've never met, but I thought it was, I was so touched that they did it. Also like really kind of humbled in so many ways, you know, mm -hmm. that um, she would be willing to inscribe that, you know, but I, I, much later on, I didn't realize how much, you know, I had just, by being luckily in Central California and my teacher being so close to Sally, um, who actually, you know, the Oregon was got quite a history to Mildred Dilling, who would come from the States to bring students to see Aurigny in France so many times also visited there. So they brought this book back and when, I, you know, when it came time for also our, um, when you, you, you move forward in university, you can have a book and book um specified so this was the book not the specific one that they gave me i still have that but mm -hmm. chose to have this book is that's the book that in the library they'll have the inscription that you know that, so that's great so you are yeah. very focusing on the also on the life of uh, andre trainier right you were well i, I mean i her works i mean that first the whole reason i mean way way back when um that 1990 competition um you know, I'd always wanted to learn the Legende by Renier, but it was on the other division because I the advanced division was the one with the scholarships that, you know, 2100. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting to IU and wanting to learn that piece and then had done some stuff. And then Ms. McDonald was like, oh, okay, why didn't you learn it? <laughs> learn the Legende? And then she's like, oh, well, why don't you just learn the other pieces? And I was like, okay, you know, so I had no, you know, I, 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 
I did that just because, okay, we'll learn this music. So it wasn't like, I'm going to go there and I'm going to enter these two things. Mm -hmm. And I think, so it was really quite a surprise when the results turned out the way they did. Um, people probably thought I was really obnoxious and I'm sure there's people who <laughs> I know it's obnoxious now because now there's young players who would love to enter many divi divisions, but they can't because they changed the rules because of that. So, but yeah, so I, 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 you know, interested in her works and there's just so much that, you know, to, they have a, what her goddaughter donated a great amount of material to the International Harp Archives, um, mm -hmm. which I don't know if everyone that are housed in the Brigham Young University. Mm -hmm. Arrow Lee Library in Pro, uh, Provo, Utah. Uh, they have actually uh, Primrose Collection, beautiful, just special collections there. But you can actually go there and look mm -hmm. at many, many, not just mm -hmm. Renier. Um, so it's been interesting over the years, um, kind of both coming, writing, you know, articles that kind of hopefully capture at least some of the performance practices that have been handed down. I mean, there's more than one way to play, of course, but just mm -hmm. that was what's there. And then also kind of taking some time away and other things. So, yeah, so. <laughs> That's a fantastic library. Honestly, it's an amazing mm -hmm. library. It's really fun. And it's open also that you can see through the internet. It's really fantastic. Yeah, so I was gonna, I'm glad you mentioned that. I mean, cause it's, I think they, it's at archive.org um, and they have the Harp Wiki and they've, they've scanned a lot of different editions. I mean, most of it's out of print, so you, but you can I always find it interesting to compare the editions because there's certain things like the mandolin that what were those, you know, what did those marks mean? And someone's like, well, maybe it means that. And they change it and then it becomes mm -hmm. that. And then you're like, well, maybe it wasn't that, you know, so. Indeed, indeed. indeed. But, and mentioning yeah. the legend, I remember you were the first one I heard this piece in the oh. IU. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Oh. I, I remember like today, it was amazing. <laughs> oh you. no, I remember your Defia Spanish dance. <laughs> No, but really, it's uh, so only when you remind me oh. this, I said like, oh, of course I remember that you were playing the Lajon. Oh, fun. well, it was just so, it was just, it's such a fun piece to play. And I, th I think as you know, one that sort of, the audience can kind of still follow. I mean, I love the Ballade Fantastique, but I usually I find if they don't know the story or hear some of the music beforehand, mm -hmm. you know, it, it can be sort of like, what's going on? It's an amazing piece too. And I think mm -hmm. she- I love it. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. And I think she, some considered it, I mean, some of the more recent ones, I should have done this before I wrote the article. <laughs> I've discovered later that, you know, she felt it was one of her, her most creative pieces, you know, so mm -hmm. it's kind of really neat. So, so. That's great to know also. Yeah. Here is, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, this. Ah, yeah. So this was, um, that's that's a Sally Maxwell. I've been talking, this is a picture actor at Penny's and I'm borrowing, but she and, and that's Francois de Varenne, uh, the goddaughter of Henri Renier, mm -hmm. and they were in France, Paris, I believe. And so one of the summers visiting, mm -hmm. I think, I uh, working maybe on this book, but so I just thought, I thought I'd include that big, so you could see that's these people. Yeah. Tell me, is the granddaughter of Renier also a musician or she has gone totally different way? I think she is a poet, you know, I, I think poet laureate, I think in France, I, I could get the title wrong because it's interesting, but mm -hmm. it's a poet, but some of the early, uh, uh, the, Title, you know, some of the really early pieces, not early, some of the pieces that aren't these big concert pieces by Renier, she would write for her, her goddaughter, her to have like, you know, recitation and playing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> she remembers uh, Renier herself. She does remember her. Yeah, that book that um, Ar Arc Vivant, um, that um, has been translated in English by a uh, music works of Miss McDonald, but um, that's written by her goddaughter. So it's a very personal account. And I think then there's, um, Oda de Montesquieu, who's a, a dear student, from what I understand from the letters, um, wrote another book that's Leon, it's still very, of course, um, mm -hmm. reverent and attached, but more from that, you know, perspective, you know, as a mm -hmm. student then colleague. So, um, so it's, yeah, it's always interesting. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> so you met, of course, together as well. Uh, no, I've never met her. I've never heard. So that's why it was so touching to receive that inscribed book. Oh, you know, no, just no. like oh, you know. No. <laughs> Because I saw that yeah. you maybe you ever uh, you have met together as well. No, so. no, but it just you know I think and I think you know a number of things that have happened or have been opportunities is because I just happened you know my Penny was so active and such a close friend of Sally Maxwell who was really quite you know a uh, very s strong leader in the many ways of a number of things in the American harp sort of. Um, 
professional, mm-hmm. you know, community. So, you know, I just happened to meet these people and, and also like, oh, I, I mean, also, yeah, I mean, just to go back for someone who's, I don't have a picture, but I think I do want to mention her, you know, early on, you know, people, Penny would host events, you know, mm-hmm. um, coming through fresno which is really the geographical center of california i think so it's it's <laughs> it's about three hours from san francisco four four and a half from la so it's it's not i mean that's not a big deal driving for if you're in california but it's not close but she would have people like she had deborah hoffman come mm-hmm. through that was the late principal harpist of the metropolitan opera play and actually that's the first time i heard the ballad fantastique because i believe Deborah Hoffman must have been preparing for an Israel contest or something because she played this wonderful recital. And then mm-hmm. there was an encore. And I do, I, this is my memory. I could be wrong because I was a kid, but I just remember saying, oh, I've got this piece I want to play for you. It's about this guy and he kills this old man. And she was so excited and she told the whole Balad Fantasy story. And then she played this piece, I mean, as an encore, I believe. <laughs> Because she was like, and I remember the critic always like, then she chose this really long piece about these dark things, and I don't, you know. <laughs> but that was the that was the first time I heard it, and I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. But also, Penny had people like um, Jane w- B. Widensall, who was, um, collab- you know, was a student of Marcel Grandini, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, um, she only visited, I remember meeting her only once because she was traveling through for something. And mm-hmm. I remember Penny at that time, which is, Penny was open because Sally Maxwell would sometimes sit in my lesson or listen to me play a Nottarman sonata. And then she'd tell me stories about being in France with Renier and Miss McDonald. And, you know, I wish I had taken better notes, but but I remember Jane was there only once. And I remember mm-hmm. she said, no, I'm not going to, I don't teach other, I, I don't, but, and she's no longer with us. So I remember she said she wasn't going to teach me because, you know, she she had very, you know, her principles of certain things. Mm-hmm. And then um, after I had won the, the, the 1990 harp thing, they had a concert artist program, which is different from now. So I was going to go there to audition because, okay, concerts, play, why not? Another opportunity. And she called Penny to tell her, like, oh, you know, I shouldn't go because they're not going to choose a student in school because, you know, you should stay in school and not be running around playing concerts. That was the feeling she communicated. So I remember her taking the time out to do that. But it was many, many years until finally I finished my um, doctoral degree and my doctoral project my thesis and I thought okay finally I can write to Jane Widensall because she's you know she'd been the editor of the American Harp Society for so a journal for so long you know and and published many things you know many editions uh and writings and things and 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 that's when even though I met her only once and then we'd started Mm -hmm. communicating and she really is kind of a remote mentor in some ways because one she'd been in academia and I remember being very quite supportive and then helpful at times very you know a very strong point of view too and I remember like one of the things she did you know among the Harp Society um actually I played at that 2003 photo with uh, Skylar Kanga and Suzanne McDonald is when we had to celebrate the anniversary of the American Harp Society she shared a, her wedding present from Grangini which was a piece Obiana May um, for baritone and harp, or a melody instrument harp, you can do it now. And there's a beautiful, just short uh, chanson, and it handwritten from Grangini, um, po- poetry from the La Bonne Chanson, the good song by Paul Baudelaire, you mm-hmm. know, so, um, you know, and then she left us way too early, you know, circumstances mm-hmm. some way, so. But so I feel very fortunate in that sense, and, but those examples were there, you know, and that, you know, just happened to meet these mm-hmm. people and, you know, kind of they mm-hmm. made it into something uh, interesting and inspiring to kind of keep looking into and investigate. Absolutely, absolutely. We have there some message, oh, yeah, from Gia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And uh, here we have another picture. It's- oh, <laughs> this is this is an Illinois Kyojin Lee, and we'd come and done, done a Pacific Harp duel. And this is one of my, you know, a group of my students from early on. You know, um, mm-hmm. I think uh, just maybe I think someone's going to feel bad if I mention. So I'll just quickly go. Uh, on the far left is my very first doctoral student, Eun Jun Yu uh, from South Korea, who came, who actually came because she. I was very fortunate my second year at Illinois that. They had not had a graduate harp performance major, but you know uh, they w- were able to start that. And so she was in that very first class of graduate students. And I met her, or she she knew of me because of one of Suzanne McDonald's summer harp master classes. You know, uh-huh. so she applied. Um, 
And then, uh, I, yes, in the three in the back standing there is undergraduates, uh, Elizabeth Jackson, um, who's mm -hmm. now, <laughs> I think many people know her through her main activities, Claire Happel Ash, who was my very first undergrad, just finished her doctorate, but is doing some really interesting work, both with historical harp and also the Alexander technique. Um, mm -hmm. Colleen Potter Thorborn, who's uh, got, you know, teaching out off on the East Coast and has many chamber groups in, in theory. And the first harp is to get a doctorate degree from Yale. So very proud of oh, her in that sense. Nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> speaking back. And then Jingyi Zhang from Taiwan, um, who was the membership chair for the World Harp Congress and also the assistant editor to me for quite a while, speaking about the editorship. I mean, it, I after a while, I was like, you know, I just need someone else to help me look at this because I've seen it so many times. I'm missing things. And she was just uh, really helpful, both in that sense, uh, very organized, just very keen. And she, her doctoral project, which actually might be interesting to some people, is that she ended up, um, it's published by Adelaide now. Uh, she found, she took the facsimile of the Parish Alvar's, the Norma Variations, his, his yeah. edition of Fantasia for its solo harp and orchestra. And I have to say, I, I kind of enjoy that piece more. The only thing is that for the orchestral 2Ds, you need to have three trombonists for one particular chord. <laughs> uh, so, and then Charles Lynch, um, yeah, he's in my first group of master students. And he's now uh, running, I it must, it's probably the largest secondary school program. It's out in Mesa, Arizona. And uh, I think it's over the number, well, it's over 200 students and over Ooh. 15 or 16 schools. And you know, he, he is, so he started, and it's kind of neat because he started in that program. He came to the harp through the program and now he's mm -hmm. uh, started from Caramel. So it's just a, you know, dear group of, uh, luck, yeah. very fortunate to have very mm -hmm. sort of individual and creative students each doing their own thing now so and then of course Kyojin it's always fun to play with her <laughs> I have a different blue dress finally <laughs> but it's really nice that uh, when you see that there is progress of the students which you work with and then they are continuing your work which you mm -hmm. gave them you know it's uh, yeah. So we're going good. beyond it, beyond it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm happy for that, you know, because yeah. we, that's what we need to do or be be able to do, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Here is uh, <laughs> Yes, and there's a, a Elizabeth, I'm used to calling her Beth, Elizabeth Jackson, there in the middle, <laughs> several years like, but this is, um actually, this is just from February. This was from the scouting jury for the Dutch harp competition. You mm -hmm. know, they were doing the rounds. Um, so we ended up, we, uh, the time before they had, gone to Hong Kong. I was so looking forward to that, but of course they were not able to do that. So we were only in going to be in Utrecht and then over in New York City. So this is in New York City. You've got Nicolo Cadore, who uh, was great fun to judge with him because I, I, I remember hearing him in one of the USA competitions on the pedal harp before and just, you know, just really good. I, this person is just, in, you know, every, you know, I imagine it must be what like, you know, Paris Alvarez must have been just, I really enjoyed his pedal harp performance. Of course, he's doing so many interesting things now, mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, that's a hurt. Uh, it was his husband next year. They were oriented. And then Maeve Gilchrist, you know, um, was there and came the she was on this, the scouting jury the time before. So we've done this. And actually, this was in February of this year. Mm -hmm. And it's just about the time that, you know, COVID-19 was starting to, you know, kind of travel. You know, kind of, and I remember from the flight from like Holland to New York, just like, OK, wear the mask. You're not sitting next to two men who are coughing a lot. So I don't know. We'll see. But um, they were having the jury there. And it's again, you know, kind of, I think, Hurt and Elizabeth, they had some volunteers there, but it really was the two of them. Morgan, I remember having trying to, I think, Line and Healy this time had shipped three pedal harps and a... Mm -hmm. Uh, silhouette lever electric harp there trying to get it in first get get it in the service elevator it's like a jenga kind of <laughs> toy <laughs> it's like if these three huge boxes plus another box for another one it's like but you know i mean thing is and nicola was helping with that and of course he's to play the next day but guess what you do you know as he said just do that so yeah, right. so we'll see we'll see them in 2021 the finalists you know it's um well, hopefully that they can meet. I think it was supposed to be this past May, but now mm -hmm. <laughs> they'll have so a year and a half of the program. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here's 
Ah, so this is this is the summer harp class, and this was a sweet photo uh, from a while ago. Um, all three of them, Jenny Wong from Taiwan, she's now teaching at Michigan State. She has a flute, viola, harp trio, Formosa, and then Jingyi again. Julia Jameson, um, who actually went to IU as an undergrad. Uh, these were my teaching assistants. I was very fortunate um, for whatever reasons for 10 years to have the same they were all my teaching assistants and we were all reunited there and i think it was, so we just took a photo of that because um i think you know it's what's from the experiences i've had at those summer harp classes is a great way for a community and also to create new music and so julia you know um, has been composing uh, these really mm -hmm. neat harp jam pieces that we put together basically and Mm -hmm. two and a half rehearsals basically and all levels um ages and levels and for pedal pedal or lever harp so it's kind of neat and we try to find a way so it's been kind of fun that's a creative thing to do so that's super that's super yeah. and here's also group of, of course as with any of these harp gatherings after the harp class <laughs> <laughs> so you can see this is we have usually a reception which i think they i think they come for the reception now i don't know about the class <laughs> But I uh, like, you know, just um, again, dear group of uh, some of my former graduates and graduates, just like mm -hmm. Molly O'Rourke is far on the left. She's now with the Urban Youth Harp Ensemble and um, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Georgia, you know, and just finished her doctorate too um, uh, on Harpo Marx. She's got some, I think she's going to present these. So she's got some neat uh, things that she's done. And Noelle Wan, you know, um, Mm -hmm. to her right who was I think the first she's been a prize winner of so many competitions but she just finished her doctorate too this this May so it's a big transition here now I mean I've known Noelle since I think gosh I think she reminded me maybe eight it's been a long time she did her undergrad mm -hmm. here and then went to Yale and then came back mm -hmm. for her doctorate so and her projects on agential realism so <laughs> <laughs> but you have to ask her <laughs> and gender harp. <laughs> but yeah, so excited for them. Here is a group um, on summer. It's your they are also your students, as I can see. Uh this is from the harp class. So this was last year. We couldn't have the harp class in person this year, but last year this was the premiere of I think Julia Jameson's bug portraits. So mm -hmm. it's for four harps or more, you can double the parts. And um, so this was the, the final piece. We always premiere it at the end of the last recital. And so these are students from all over, all levels mm -hmm. and all ages, and they kind of a neat one. That That's a kind of neat new piece. Uh, she was able to get a chromatic scale uh, between all the parts um, with harmonics. So you, the spider movement, because it's about bugs, it's like doo, 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 doo. We had one pedal, so it's not quite chromatic in the premiere, but yeah, oh. there's some neat pieces. <laughs> so I've been conducting, so they, they get my very, their chance was like, tell the conductor what you want. <laughs> this is your one time you can tell the conductor exactly what will make it easier for you. <laughs> Great. And here's uh, just a reunion. Um, I think that one of the Chicago, I think maybe it was one of the concert series, maybe at Lionel Healy, but it was really sweet to have a, a number of them come back and, and, and some of their, their partners or spouses too in this photo we met in Chicago. I think who have I known? Uh, so like third from the right, some people might recognize Catherine Oliver, Catherine Denler Oliver, who she's mm -hmm. a sales manager for Lionel Healy. I think she's manages a number of accounts in Asia. So I think uh, it's kind of neat. And then you've got mm -hmm. open front. There's Noel again to my left, uh, my left. And then, oh, in the middle, I think I have another picture that there's Aaron Brooker Miller, who's, you know, was the executive yes. director of USA for a while. Um, two editions actually, and Stephanie Gustav Amfar, who is a news editor for the Harp column now. So, and then mm -hmm. you know, a number of people there. Uh, let's see, Lisa Collins. Just present and then Molly, yeah, for Molly's. <laughs> and I apologize, I didn't get everyone. <laughs> no problem, that's very fine. And here is um, your picture uh, of this, Eleanor. Yeah, yes, Aaron and Stephanie. This was at the last USA competition, so it was kind of it was really kind of a nice 2019 summer. You know, mm -hmm. Aaron was finishing up uh, executive directoring it, and then Stephanie had come in to do you know the interviews for Harp Column, and you know, she's you know doing so many things about mm -hmm. harp ensemble, pr mm -hmm. principal harp, you know, chambers. So it's, it's, it's kind of really nice to see what, you know, they all have had their own paths, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here's the open here with Miss McDonald and Linda Wood. Linda Wood. Yes. Well. Yes. Yeah. So this was really nice to be able to come back and, and see them at that uh, mm -hmm. panel. I think, you know, at the, last USA competition. Absolutely. So. absolutely. <laughs> and I have found also some pictures on the Oh, list. surprise. Okay, forget. Ah, uh, this is I the... <laughs> 
<laughs> this is um, at the Amsterdam World Harp Congress. So we were oh, doing no. a piece for Flute and Harp and nice professional photo. Uh, very nice one. And fun in the Musica Bell. That was a, I, I enjoyed that Congress very much for um, uh, they, you know, there's such a strong tradition to all the different types of contemporary music and world music. And I remember you know, like Ernst and Stupp and there was a great mm -hmm. world music concert with so many of the different types of strong instruments from the world and mm -hmm. bean bags too. I mean, you know, they had big blue bean bags. You could just lie on the floor and watch the concert <laughs> among right. other things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and this is also a nice picture of yours. Oh, I'm playing a haiku because I've got paint brushes in my hands. Yes, this is at the this is in Hong Kong at that uh, Asian Harp Festival in 2008. Mm -hmm. So, so many harps and um, playing a couple of the haiku for harps. This was the sweeping the broom brush one. <laughs> <laughs> and here is from last year, probably. Oh also. yes, yeah, from the USA competition with Dan mm -hmm. Yu, who's on the jury, and then Heaven Fan, who's on the board of the World Harp Congress, uh, right? Uh, not sorry, USA International Harp Congress board right now, and actually a member with the um, the composition contest, the Ruth Inglefield uh -huh. one. She's on the committee with me now, right yeah. now, which yeah. is Sonia Inglefield is the advisor you interviewed. So mm -hmm. excited mm -hmm. for that seventh mm -hmm. edition. That's very <laughs> And here's you again, Mrs. Uh, McKenna, and I do understand. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, so, uh, this was that that was that infamous uh, tribute concert in the 2016 USA competition. We all look much relieved after that concert's done. <laughs> and um, yeah, so. Flowy, flowy. Yeah, we and we premiered a, you know, we played a piece uh, by Richard Pryor there, A Call of the mm -hmm. Sirens, um, uh, for that, which was um, he had written for us. And we have another piece we were going to play at a tribute concert, but we're going to work on that. He's written a new one, Kina for Shirabanki, which he kind of arranged a, his second movement of his new flute concerto is really just a gorgeous mm -hmm. piece. And mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if it'll be as gorgeous on the harp because it's these beautiful sustained string things, but I just really liked it. And so we asked if he would do that and so someday we'll we'll, we'll get around to that <laughs> i'm not sure when we're going to be starting live concerts here to be honest so i have found also here oh. the <laughs> yes i you know okay i'm getting here this was this was usa the mac again i think it's uh two says 2013 maybe yes uh mm -hmm. from vanderbilt music michelle albert so okay. and then um yes yeah. <laughs> here's some historical picture as well oh my god yada <laughs> i knew you were gonna fire um well as you can tell by the hair and also by the scarf and the leopard print or whatever it is this has got to be the 1980s in high school <laughs> This is really 1980s fashion. So this is in high school. I think these are classmates on an academic decathlon team. And they're, really <laughs> they're Facebook friends. And if they got this far to the interview, they'll see that they're going to be completely. <laughs> no, but I must say, I love these kind of pictures because they're really something that you usually don't see anywhere else, you know? So that's really. <laughs> <laughs> but still it's like a nice story which is in our mind so it's really nice yes. <laughs> and then from this picture which i like very much it's, oh uh, this is from the this is from the australian sydney world harp congress so mm -hmm. this is um they were giving both a I, that was where they had a service award for me but uh, really they're recognizing pat wooster who's just i i mean <laughs> It's amazing what, you know, she's, the, she, for, she's formerly chair of the World Harp Congress, spearheaded so many things. I think her, her and um, Jim Wooster, her husband, I'm, I'm sure those, some of the people have seen him, he for a long time, him and um, Ray Ownby, they would take so many photos along with Gabrielle Motor, Alex Bonet's um, mm -hmm. wife, you know, just really dedicated <laughs> and, and just always wanting to, you know, make more possibilities for people. So this was, yeah, they were giving, I think, Pat award there so it was very nice to be included it's lovely and here you are you are giving some prize to the prize winner oh, yes i'm glad i dressed up appropriately because this was <laughs> i think this was the american harp society's um they were giving jeremy siochi that's the brother of um catherine siochi who won that year and he had also won the composition contest prize and so we were basically giving the american harp society had been sponsoring the monetary portion of that and that's always kind of gets a certificate and recognition mm -hmm. to him for mm -hmm. that 
And we are found also. Oh, you did. You know, I almost sent this, and I was like, I have too many pictures of me in front of wine glasses. <laughs> I almost so. I, okay, so you found it. I knew. You found it. Okay, you know, this is again. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this does happen. I, I'm sure um, this was in Sydney again. And Kathy Kinzo on the far left, who's chair of the World Harp Congress, her, her colleagues, when the Minnesota Orchestra, you know, she's principal form, just retired principal harp, they had found this amazing. I've never had such amazing shellfish. And I don't think I can even eat shellfish after this because this is, you know, because was, we had met at this restaurant um, in Anhaus there. And then, you know, Nic Nic Nicoletta Sanzin with Mineco, yeah. in a way. So, um, went to this place and it was so good, Yana, that I I, I, I dragged my food just to there the next day. He like, was really, really not wanting to have shellfish because he had had a really bad experience with it, but he had to admit it was, yeah, so it, it was that good. <laughs> so I think this was right after maybe the, before the Congress had started, maybe it was right after they have these very intensive board meetings usually when they have it for these organizations because it's the only time you can get everyone together you know just like a day or two right before so uh -huh. I think this is probably uh -huh. after one of those <laughs> but it's lovely. and here I found also this picture tell you oh you know this is when I was president in Utah and this was oh you know this was kind of a neat situation I'm glad you found it um, I was presenting the Lifetime Achievement Award to Shirley Onbi, who, um, as many of you knew, for a long time ran Lyman Healy West, hosted so many institutes. I mean, the number of harpists in Utah, just, you know, just the music and the players have come for them. So she was receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award. And it was, so usually they give this plaque, beautiful plaque and a clock. And actually that year, they also gave a Lifetime Achievement Award to Joanne Jarofsky, who I, you know, studied briefly uh, right before college, but she couldn't be there in person. So it was kind of, and it just, you know, the way they nominate wasn't like, oh, you know, nominate your teacher. So it just worked out to be that way. And I think a really important time to recognize them for, you know, cause, uh, Joanne had been um, chairing, she still is chairing our, the national competition for the AHS um, for many years. And then Sri, Sri Lee Oibi had hosted so many institution, uh, institutes and done so many things in that sense. And so many students, you know, come from there. Lovely. So yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I just found this beautiful picture, which oh. is uh, you know, from, <laughs> also on the Facebook. So I just had to find it also and show it also. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this was when I got a teaching award at the university. They actually, for the campus award for graduate teaching. Mm -hmm. And so we, we got a, a lovely photographer on our campus. And so he actually, <laughs> put myself enough together so that's that's i was like oh this is a photo i can use it it's, i probably need to get a new one <laughs> no, it's absolutely beautiful and i have one picture which is also a surprise which i found oh, oh yana <laughs> <laughs> again you know the, yes this is a year this is at miss mcdonald's our previous house we've got alicia romeo there uh mm. tracy ralston and then okana koyagi oh she's so dear friend um she was the year ahead of me in Japan. And then Karen Grimsey, you know, she was also in Kanako's year. And I just saw her, um, um, is she playing, uh, I, oh, I'm just, she's playing, is she, I'm not gonna say the right word, but she's, you know, principal, har she's the harpist with one of our military bands and ensembles for many years. So uh, we came in the same, I, I was a year right after her there. So it's so <laughs> nice to see her after so many years. That I think the last, uh ahs in, uh event oh in north carolina yes they played mm -hmm. there in their whole quartet mm -hmm. there so so this was my surprise because this i found oh, okay <laughs> although you did find the one from high school amazing everything what you have done already it's really super super oh. fantastic i just would like to know what what is any any projects which you are now planning and what is in front of you if there is anything well i think you know um project wise i've been i'm actually finally returning and <laughs> as i mentioned it was 1998 when i did the Renier concerto i'm finally returning to that i actually have to finish that because i've got some grants and i present some of it so i'm working on an article t about mm -hmm. the concerto um and not just the concerto but what i always thought was really interesting was we've seen the infamous quote or not infamous the famous quote you know uh, that kind of launching the harp as a solo instrument from her performance and i was thought okay that's great i would love to see what else was the reception you know mm -hmm. at the time 
Um, and so I found some really interesting and also what Renier's own kind of maybe to dig more, dig more kind of maybe highlight more how she thought of that. And it's kind of been really fascinating. So I actually do need to do this. And I guess I have the time to do it. It's been to actually write it together, both performance practices that um, was lucky enough to have a few notes from, you know, from Miss McDonald, because when she was preparing it for that concerto, and then also finding from her letters from her previous students and um, kind of her, uh, her, her perception of herself, you know, I mean, it's it's really quite, there's a funny letter, which I have to make sure to include where, not funny, but it's not funny actually, but you know, she was quite annoyed that they still listed her as Mademoiselle Renier as a composer. She's like, when is it just gonna be Renier, you know? <laughs> you know like instead of mr or mrs and things so mm -hmm. more her agency and awareness of that so that's one thing um mm -hmm. you know i have the piece you know still working with my flutists and things and that i think you know during this time too of kind of this whole situation i think i'd like to start returning a little bit to the composition you know and things mm -hmm. and so um but you know so those are some things that are kind of in the air <laughs> along with kind of seeing you know, mm -hmm. what the day job <laughs> it will entail here, you know, um, at the university, because we're all trying mm -hmm. to so we'll still try to, we're still not quite sure, mm -hmm. you know, what the fall is going to quite be like, although mm -hmm. my university at least says that we will be opening, you know, of course, mm -hmm. depending on health and wellness, but, you know, we're still mm -hmm. trying to figure that out, because particularly for what we do, mm -hmm. um, more so for the winds, you know, um, it's, it's, it's not, being together mm. is actually quite a quite mm. some an issue. So mm. Mm. Oh, it's difficult, but I hope really that it will be solved through the so, through the summer, so that at the in the fall that you can really start to to work. Usually, as we were talking before we started to be on broadcast, that you also teach online, that everything works the same way as everywhere and for everybody. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been, you know, in some ways it's been, it's great that we actually have this now because I think, you know, be, we, before, you know, I remember when, when we were in school, you waited for that letter in the mail, <laughs> you know, it was very expensive to call, you know, like, so it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of, so it's great we had, I, it is, there are some limits in certain ways, in some ways it's as much as energy and also the equipment you know, on both sides along with their, you know, connection and, you know, but in some ways it's also been a good growing experience. Like I had a couple students who didn't have instruments, you know, they were not, they weren't majoring it, but they were trying to study. So we actually really had to pivot, but it's been, but it was good for me too. Cause it was like, all right, mm -hmm. what I have to find things that one, I hope, you know, keep them inspired. Cause I mean, I think mm -hmm. it, it's, it was of course really challenging for some, you know, everything they expected was totally different, you know, and so, mm -hmm. and then others, you know, I learned from them, you know, kind of, they had a really interest, like, you know, from a completely different perspective, like, mm -hmm. use harp and hip hop and trap music. And so, you know, I always find it's always a can still keep learning. So that was good in some ways, but, you know, I would love to kind of, of course, love to be in person, you know, we can do it safely, you know. Absolutely. So. And you are now in Illinois? Yes, yeah. I am in Illinois. I, I managed to no travel plan now, <laughs> although it's yeah. tempting, you know, to get on the road. But you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had to, of course, ca Cardiff was canceled. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I luckily mm -hmm. they I, kind of was an interesting waiting game. Is like, all right, when are you gonna like try to get the ticket? But finally, they they did reverse the ticket because they finally canceled. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like. It's like, okay, so now you've gotten me to Amsterdam, but then I leave from Chicago. How do I get between Amsterdam and Chicago? <laughs> so, but they finally canceled the whole ticket, you know, but yeah. it's, 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 mm -hmm. it's challenging because I think right now, you know, my mother's still in Nevada. I would plan, I plan to visit both her and, you know, a good friend who had helped when my father was ill, but, you know, they're, they are in mm -hmm. one of the high risk groups and can't travel. And even mm -hmm. now, according. so we'll, we'll see for now, it's mm -hmm. just kind of wait and see and, you know, Hopefully, stay healthy. You know? yeah. Yeah. And with your flutes, do you rehearse online? Uh, not right now. <laughs> I have been involved with learning, learning experience. He's he's in the middle of a festival teaching, so you know we've mm -hmm. it, tried with the lag. We did. I did. I'll, I'll be waiting. Well, I won't reveal everything. It, it's been a good learning experience. I think there is a fun project. Uh, hopefully, uh, coming out of New Zealand. Uh, but we'll see on um, the so dyads trying to get collaborations, but it's been a good learning experience <laughs> in terms of, you know, playing with the machine. So I think if composing, it'd be great to take advantage of 
the wonderful mm -hmm. extensions we have possibilities, mm -hmm. but also be able to still express when the power goes out, <laughs> which it did last week. And I'm hearing storms. So if we do go out, although the interview is almost over, I can still kind of <laughs> so. That's very true, yeah. But you have such abilities also, as you said, to compose. So I hope that you really do some pieces. So that, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have commitment issues. So, but we'll see. But I, I think it's, it's something I, I need, I should do, and I need to do. And for me, it's always, it kind of comes from outside the field, kind of what inspires me sometimes. So I think, you know, I'd love to do something. I've always had a interest obviously of our recordings there's an interest in nature and science and lots mm -hmm. of things like that so mm -hmm. i have an idea but since i haven't really put myself to task on it yet i better <laughs> keep you should, you should never <laughs> your ideas. and one yeah. question about uh, when your parents have been never musicians and your mother was a mathematics teacher mm -hmm. and did you ever had the also intention to do the same thing what your parents did? No, I wish I did because now I, well, I mean, I wish I, I could under, I, I should have challenged myself that way. But I think one thing about my parents, I mean, they were always very supportive, but they also let me kind of find from like a wild weed. <laughs> you know, it's not like you have to do this. It's like, all right, check it out, you know? And so you had to really kind of either be self-motivated or, you know, be curious. Um, I think early on, you know, I, like I mentioned, it was going to be art or probably surgery. I do think um, mm -hmm. as abstract as it is, I, I, I love abstractions, but I think I can recognize that I need to do something, you know? And so I think probably as, and then for a while, you know, it was interested, actually when I was applying for college, I was interested in, um, I was really interested in civil liberties, or, you know, kind of law in that sense. And that, that was actually what I was applying to colleges for at that point. And music was the thing that made me interesting, you know, like, or, you know, kind of, you know, or at that point, I, that's what I knew. So mm -hmm. I, I mean, I wish in some ways I had, I would better, because of course they, you know, I mean, and I, I it's, it's really admirable because you really had to retrain yourself from mathematics to computer science, which is just, you know, so many things. And so, um, but, you know, so I, but I think the general principle of just kind of um, one, doing things, discovering, you know, things, mm -hmm. but also it's something beyond you. I think that, I think they did share because they both um, kind of in different ways, always mm -hmm. were very invested as both teachers and, mm -hmm. um, it, as professionals in the field or wherever they were, mm -hmm. wherever they, their influence was going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I'm in academia, I'll just put this out there because you know, only a few people is. My father founded a department and anyone who's in academia, this will sound impossible, but then probably in our position, you probably sound impossible. They had founded the computer science department and they actually, at one point, he moved it from the college that it was housed in, you know, to another college. They accepted mm -hmm. it there, which I don't know. And then at some point, they moved back. <laughs> so being here, I, that just, that anyway. <laughs> so. nice. I would, I would know, uh, I would guess that when you were studying that um, you did not have any problem with the, with this, uh, this uh, subjects, this majors, like, like mathematics and everything, because it was not sure no. the, I have to admit this, and this is really something that I would be really useful right now um, because at least American high schools, um, it varies a little bit. I, my last math course <laughs> was, um, I took a summer city course um, in calculus to get it done because our schedules were so busy. And then they, it just, I ended up not taking math past that point. So I had had calculus, but I can't remember. So I did it once like back then. And then because of um, uh, Indiana's, the music degree requirements, the general what we call a general education you know outside subjects they were the credits were so small that when i came into college i really didn't have to take i think i had needed one more credit which i took you know an honors kind of survey literature class kind of thing so i was done so i didn't have to take it which is you know i mean in some ways i should have used my college for going to university really explore but then of course you know i think when you 
as you can recall, when you're doing these competitions, mm -hmm. you know, there's sometimes they don't go on a school calendar. So we'd have to be out of class for like two weeks mm -hmm. or, you know, or, or a week. And I, I distinctly remember, <laughs> I remember in, um, when I did the Lily Last Skiing competition and I was a graduate student at that point and it was the spring and it was a late decision. Um, there's a second competition and then, you know, it's like Miss McDonald's owner Drew's like, oh, you want to do it? It's like, oh, well, okay, sure. You know, let's learn the cup. Don't do this. If you prepare a competition, everyone prepares everything, but in general, learn to repertoire as soon as possible. <laughs> so decided to do it in the spring. And I remember it was in April, mm -hmm. the first week or second week of April. And I remember being in that graduate class and I won't say which professor is because really quite respectful, but he's like, oh, okay. Well, your grade is fine so far in the class. So you can take an F on that test and you'll be fine. You know, because there's a test. I was like, hey, I'll take it early. You know, I, I just have to be gone. And so I was so incensed. It's like, I'm not going to take an F if I didn't take it and, you know, get a lower. So I dropped the class. <laughs> I don't know if I should have done that. But on the other hand, it was quite a, that was quite a fun, um, uh, mm -hmm. not fun. It was a really great experience. Oh, coming back to Mayani, because we both, I had used the Makamak edition in the IU library. Um, mm -hmm note to students out there and come and learned it for that competition and showed up there and uh it turns out he had revised it which of course me and miss mcdonald had no idea <laughs> it was a revised edition <laughs> so i just remember at one point going, honey oh uh, do you think you could learn it and i'm like no i'm not gonna learn it like for, <laughs> i mean it was it was different enough i was like no i don't think i can change this <laughs> And because they hadn't, they accepted both versions. But you know, that was that was you know at that point, it's like, oh yeah, I should have like probably looked into that. <laughs> and which version is now more more popular? Uh, you know, I don't know if you can get the original. So if you, I mean, the original one he did. So I think you probably only can probably get the one he revised. Which you know, I actually I like the original, although I do like. Um, he added these pedal slides and nail nail um, clicks at the end at one part, but he did he did revise it a bit. So I think if you do want to look and compare um, mm -hmm. the edition, which is probably why I'm so draconian of my students to make sure you look at different editions, is um, you probably need to find it um, in a library, inner library loan or something, or someone who's had it. So, mm -hmm. but it's it's really quite interesting because you can kind of see his thought process. I mean, mm -hmm. his sister's a harpist, but you mm -hmm. can see he's an architect. How he wrote it for you know, yes, there's four finger patterns. You know, it's not not a problem it's just it's not like I mean, he didn't make it easier it's like he can figure out how to play this mm -hmm. and then the revised one he did for me it's harder to learn it because i'm like wait i learned it the other way mm -hmm. this doesn't this seems like it's not natural now but yeah mm -hmm. so. <laughs> very interesting tell me which piece uh, you liked besides legend the most Oh, oh, I always have trouble with these questions. <laughs> I like the most. Um, I don't uh, I well, like the oh, beside. Well, I mean, actually, I do like the ballade over Le Jean more in some ways, just because I think it's kind of a encapsulates a lot of the things she's experimenting with. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it depends on the context it's presented and things like that. So, um, you know, I think, uh, oops, I'm screen it again. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. This is my problem. I'm always, I, I like to, I, I get curious and explore. So it's, it's like, it's the next thing comes. And so, but I know I do enjoy, I mean, I of course enjoy hearing pieces played well, very well or with, with heart. And then also, mm -hmm. you know, the ones that take some chances too. I, I hope I can find something you appreciate about it. I think that's one of the things why, like in my bio to qualify, I don't, maybe someone's done it before. I, I don't like to presume because I feel like then that might close my ears off because I think, oh, well, speaking about competition, so I can, I remember one competition where, mm -hmm. you know, I won't say which one, <laughs> um, you know, and this has had happened outside of music too, where someone would go, you know, okay, where, where are you from? Where do you study? And then it keeps going. And it was like, they kept asking questions. If for if that particular question was more, uh, where are you from? You know, the, oh, no, no, where, where are you really from? Okay, where are your parents from? Ah, uh, you know, which meant they were listening of a certain preconception that they wanted to find the information that would agree with what they had already. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you know, sometimes when you, 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 you think that then maybe you, you're not going to hear everything that's possibly there. So I think part of that's why I have trouble answering that question. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand because 
I think that we like, usually we like to play what we play at that moment because we mm -hmm. must like it. If we mm -hmm. choose it, we have to we have to enjoy it. So mm -hmm. only maybe some people don't like spec, spec, uh, uh, particular uh, period of the, um, uh, music. So mm -hmm. I think that maybe you like, of course, Bach as you do the transcriptions and you like the Rainier. So maybe, you know, some people don't like classical music or something. Or, but yeah, or don't like Rainier, yeah. yeah. And then I think there's times when, and I do think though now, I mean, like often it just comes up sometimes when, you know, with these talks, it's like, how do you play something you don't like? I just can't, mm -hmm. it makes me feel terrible. And it's like, well, you have, can, you, can you find just even one thing, yeah. you know, like one note that when you play it, you know, you're like, this is what I want to do with it. And, you know, or find a way, actually, I think this is, I think in some ways, you know, having parents that came as international students, I think in one ways where, you know, so many years is that, you know, kind of appreciate, be able to try to appreciate or at least understand a different perspective and that sort of thing, you know, and not to be, there's only one way. I mean, sometimes, of course, there's, you know, there's things that are really out off, but, you know, um, and I think because then you'll you'll find out more. So mm -hmm. and like same with some of the I used to do a lot of contemporary music. And that was kind of thing because that's what you do. And then you know I'm at a stage now in life where I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> no, not not to do it. But you know, like I'll hear a piece and I'll be like, I'll, I'll be pretty judgmental, <laughs> at least in my internal mind. Mm -hmm. But I'll appreciate the creativity and effort that someone put that there. But mm -hmm. I was also you know I because I do think you do at some points do have to sort of at least understand why you're having those reactions or those kind of perceptions. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And is there any wish you have in your in your mind, any dream which you would like to come through? Um, well, right now, I mean, I really do hope just health for people, good health and, and the planet, you know, really too. I mean, just, we're all in the same, same place and, or not, we're not all in the same place, but you know, that people are health, that we have health, good health, that we can keep that, um, stay curious, you know, not to presume. I always think you, you'll, you'll find more fun, interesting things that way. And, you know, and also hopefully, you know, share that forward, you know, so, and, uh, there was another thing, but it's escaping me at the moment. Um, good health, be curious, or presume, uh, be inspired and, you know, kind of, yeah, hopefully keep and, and yeah, appreciate, I think appreciate, you know, whatever it is at the moment, if you can, and not that you have to always be on, I mean, we're allowed to be human, but, you know, I do think those things will hopefully to keep perspective, you know, so. And I really hope that we can meet I know, Yana. And I, it's so nice to talk to you. You know, the thing about these gatherings sometimes is often like you just, it's like 10 seconds because everyone's so busy. So it's actually really having a <laughs> longest conversation since 1990. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But it was so wonderful, really. All your pictures, all your stories, all, I mean, with the harps, it's absolutely amazing. You missed it at the beginning. <laughs> You must listen to it again because this is absolutely you. And I don't think that there is any other harp in the world who has this kind of story to the harp. Let's, let's hope not. <laughs> let's hope not. Absolutely amazing. And I was really so happy and so pleased that you were with us today. And really thank you so much for everything that you have shared and you are doing. And I, I'm just like looking forward really to hear from you anything what you, you will have as a project and anything what's coming on. And of course, about your CDs, your recordings, your concerts here anything what is coming so let's 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 get, get me know about everything oh thank you yana i'm just honored and humbled that you're including me in this harp channel i hope it wasn't too long for people are like what are they talking about but really it's really amazing and you're know, just I, I you're a true believer and it's just always through <laughs> so i i feel really lucky like i said really lucky that our paths cross and mm -hmm. it's been really amazing you know um, just to see if through all these years you know and be able to appreciate that so i'm really grateful and really just thank very you. touched thank <laughs> you very much and really and i thank to everybody who was with us today and that you were sharing we have also one more comment so i would just like to yeah to share it with you. <laughs> oh thank you so, so much, much. So really many thanks to everybody who was with us. I think many, many, many thanks to to Anne, of course, for her time and for her stories, her life. 
her or <laughs> this and everything what she's doing. And I really, I hope to see you very soon. And I am looking forward to see all of you online on Tuesday. Today we have Saturday, so on Tuesday we will see again uh, together. And I'm excited, of course. And I wish everybody a wonderful weekend and great evening, great day, because you have the morning now. So I wish you a wonderful day and I really hope to see you very soon. So have a great time and thank you, everybody. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, thank you, thank you Yana. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye, dear. <laughs>